yet. Uh, Adelaide need to win here really to submit a, 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 an invitation basically into the uh, Cox Plate field. Back to Global View worked off the rail and Divine Oath last. Tens are turned for home. It's Adelaide. Adelaide has swooped down in front of Tourist. General Jack between horses. Sheldon Highball. Global View down the center of the course. Divine Oath was outpaced. Adelaide drifts. Adelaide drifts. Coming inside the final half furlong but keeping on for Ryan Moore. Tourist toward the rail. It's Adelaide. And Adelaide pushed out to win the Secretariat Stakes. Tourist was second. Sheldon third. You gotta love your voice, don't you? Uh, pushed out to win the Secretary. Uh, that's uh, that's significant, obviously. Yeah, Bruce. Uh, he's a very, very good horse. I mean, he, in his six starts, he's been first or second. He ran second in the King Edward over the Royal Ascot behind Eagle Top. He's a very good horse, and uh, he's gone one better there in the Secretary. He, he's a real serious horse. Um, obviously, all the word is he'll come down. Uh, trained by Aiden. I'm, I'm pretty sure Aiden will train him in the Cox Plate and uh, looking forward to him. Comes out of this. Here's the market where favourite and Arruyo for Godolphin heavily backed in early. This is last of all, rich enough at the 600 metres, led by about a half. Petrology running second, just in behind them, Aruhu moving up three wide and Sovereign Duke waits on a run, followed by Tudor as they neared the bend. Merion off and running and then Coram. Kavika a long way back, awkwardly placed, followed by Turfain and Fast Cash coming around the turn, rich enough narrowly from Petrology. Aruhu starting to run on well down the outside and then came Merion. Rich Enough, the leader into the straight from Petrology. Aruhu, Merion and Fast Cash coming, but Rich Enough left them behind. Fast Cash running on strongly, but Rich Enough bolted in by two and a half lengths to Fast Catch and Turfane ran third. Then Petrology and Merion Aruhu weakened in the run home and they were followed then by... Well, he's made a good field look pretty average here. Absolutely brilliant stuff here from uh, Rich Enough and there's been some huge bets landed at long odds here, $41 first markets, returns $12 the tote, $41. Oh, fantastic. Um, went through the first half standing 35.03, virtually split the same coming back here, riding the speed. Second start of the race, there's no loafers behind here, Marion Arruya. He, uh, he, 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 he sits in front here and he did get his own way in front and they did go, I, I, I reckon, I haven't looked at the time, but I'll bet they negatively split that race. He took off here, gave him one cut with a stick, there was three and four lengths on him. This is a very, very smart three-year-old. You can't do that at only your second run in a race and first up and, and not be pretty smart. I know he's in the is, right part of the track, but he, he's smart. The thing is, he's got a really interesting race with this rain. Can Terra Vista handle the rain that is falling in the really heavy track? It is the short price favourite. Into the mounting yard we go. Oakfield is Janub. Oakfield commands in front as they prepare to swing. Leads by a half a length on Night Legion. In cahoots and Terra Vista not all that far away. Moriarty's made up ground out wide and Montant sticking to the inside. So Oakfield commands joined here by Night Legion. Terra Vista's running on within cahoots. They make their runs together but Terra Vista had the better kick and it got the better here of in cahoots. Moriarty's down the outside from Ninth Legion. Montan but Terra Vista broke away. He'll handle the mud all right. He's coming on and records a good win. In cahoots gets second. Bullpoint might get third on the outside from Montan. That Oakfield commands followed by Moriarty Ninth Legion and then at the head of the other Montan. Well, he's got a great record. You're going to believe what Joe says here. He's got a great wet track pedigree here. Seven out of ten. Glenn, you've ridden this horse before. Is he a Group 1 horse in the making? Look, I think he is. Um, I, he just got such great acceleration, you know, and he's, he's so relaxed. Gardens for the first of our features today, and that is the Run to the Roses, the MTA New South Wales. In front, Egrets on the outside. Nostradamus trying to push off the fence. He's pushed Almalad out of the way there. Then came Law, followed by down the outside, Scratch Me Lucky and Hallowed Crown. As they get to the 300, it's still Sniper Fire in front from Egret. Then Nostradamus is trying to wind up, followed by Alma Ladd and Hallowed Crown is starting to run on strongly. It's Egret in front. Hallowed Crown is coming right down the outside with Kameon. Hallowed Crown! Hallowed Crown has won it and remains undefeated and goes on to beat Kameon and Egret, followed by Modoc, Sarajevo and Law, then Sniper Fire and then further back Scratch Me Lucky and two in the market. Alma Ladd and Nostradamus have run second last and last. Wow. The two we'll move on to the uh, McNeil Stakes. And Novel Dance is your favourite in a wide market here. $5.50, the only filly in the field. This is the McNeil.
Chivalry and Zululand. They're running down to approach the turn. Cornrow the leader by nearly a length to Boomwa. Jabali third, followed by Novel Dancer fourth on the inside, and then Forgiven Forget Nordic Empire, Moon Over Manhattan, Stingray, Tantat Diamond, Awesome Rock as well back as they corner, and Chivalry pulled to the outside, and Zululand is last. Cornrow the leader into the straight. Jabali hung off the turn, and Cornrow led by two. Novel Dancer running on now. Nordic Empire, and here comes Awesome Rock right down the outside was Chivalry. So they swap the leader now. Nordic Empire got off the front. Awesome Rock and Chivalry fly home together. Chivalry after Nordic Empire and got him right on the wire, I'd say. Chivalry grabbing Nordic Empire to win with Awesome Rock third. They're followed by Forgiven Forget, who stayed on well, and then Stingray, followed by Tantet Novel Dancer. There's your print. Chivalry's got it. Cav and Boss have had a quiet time. Is this the horse that can take them back to the big time? It's an awesome win. wise and your horse is improving the preps. Oh, well, you got all the form doctors working for you, mate. <laughs> you get them to tell me, but I think he's he's pretty good. He was obviously better than any of those guys today. So, uh, you know, we've got to wait and see what else is around and uh, what comes along. But certainly uh, he was pretty impressive today. Happy? He's the best Colton in Victoria. I've got no doubt about that. He's a very, very you wait till he gets out to a mile and beyond because he's got, he's just got a great constitution. He's got a, a great demeanour. Why he probably wasn't at his best as a two-year-old, just not filled in, not mature enough. I like the way he did it here. The last hundred metres of this, he really rocketed to the line. Yeah, I can see that horse if he uh, can run the trip. You know, being a Derby prospect this, this. Uh, this spring, I'm not, I'm not trial. I'm Boban at 3.30, the tote. Messine, who also comes out of the missile stack. Could move a two in of the race, as you'd, you'd possibly find. We're looking for the wait for eight stars to step up uh, for the... And Gig missed it by a length or so. Poisson Stalloon jumped away fast. Dissident is up there. Here's Sweet Idea coming over. Sweet idea by a neck. Moment of change second. Two and a half lengths away. Dissident followed then by Messini outside Poisson Stalloon and then Boban and Happy Trails. And next is Silent Achiever. Into the straight though. Moment of change. Raced up to Sweet Idea who's under the whip. Dissident turns third starting to finish and then Poisson Stalloon and Boban coming down the outside and then Silent Achiever. 150 to go. Dissident and Dissident. Sweet idea together from Puissant Stallone, but it's Dissident who takes the lead clearly. Starts to race away. Dissident bolted in by two lengths. Sweet idea second, Puissant Stallone ahead away third. Then Silent Achiever. Boban and Satorius got home, followed by Gig Happy Trail. And then Claire Cunningham's had him in Sydney until last week, and they've done a tremendous job. And, uh, you know, he, he's a high class colt, uh, conditions to suit. Didn't he? He's a, he's a horse that. Uh... I love his tactical speed. I like the way he revved him up and then he come back underneath him. I, I think he's he's a very interesting horse. But look, of the beat again uh, holds up the, the my top three. All right, the pick of the yard is the class in the race and the Group One winner that is Earthquake. Talking about Group One winner, yeah, been fifty, but it's firm to full point. Alpha Miss the rank outsider, twenty six dollars. Winks. $8 into $7 and number six, Sultry Feeling, six fifty. dollars Now the race leads by about a neck. Sultry Feeling on the outside is second. And then Winks and Alpha Miss, they're sharing third. Peggy Jean is next to last. And Memorial going up on the inside at the rear. At the halfway mark, 600 to go. Earthquakes in front. Sultry Feeling on the outside, close at hand. They've dominated the race in front here. They haven't gone all that quick. Now, Peggy Jean's making a move on the outside. Four wide. Winks is going at the same time. Then Alpha Miss, followed by Memorial, still at the back of the field. Earthquake in front. McAvoy's starting to shake her along now. As Sultry Feeling ranged up on the outside. Winks made a line of three. Then Peggy Jean, followed by Alpha Miss. It's Winks on the outside, taking the lead from Earthquake, who's under immense pressure. Pressure and Wink straight away with 100 metres to go. She'll remain undefeated. Wink's a great prospect and she comes down to win its earthquake and Alpha Miss fight out second and third, followed by in Wink's made a line of three. Then Peggy Jean followed by Alpha Miss. It's Wink's on the outside taking the lead from Earthquake who's under immense pressure and Wink straight away with 100 metres to go. She'll remain undefeated. Wink's a great prospect and she comes down to win its earthquake and Alpha Miss fight out second and third. Followed by, in behind them next, Sultry Feeling and then Peggy J oh, Don't worry about the end of the spring, her winning the most races. She started with a bang. She had plenty of improvement to come today. She was soft. She's quality. Three out of three. The Magic Bloodstock, Peter Ty and his partners in this gallop. But they got us in 35-38, Richo. She's top draw, this girl. 6.30, 2.94. Uh, as you said, Mark, uh, great prospect. Look, I think... Uh, uh, 
the thing about her is that in her two previous wins, she's lacked a lot of dash in the early part of the straight. She's taken a long time to wind up. But yesterday, she ran up to these better class horses and was there uh, at the top of the rise fighting it out with them. So she's made a great improvement from last time in. And when the races get longer, Richard, she's going to even be even better. Uh, look, I made a statement yesterday prior to the race in the parade ring that uh, I think by the end of the spring carnival, she would have won more than all the others in the race and she's going to be a star. I just thought she was probably a little bit soft yesterday going into it. It was really dominant. Wow, she's, this is an outstanding uh, talent. Um, she's three for three now. Uh, the manner in which she goes about her work, she, she travels, relaxes and strong. And she's got a stout pedigree. And uh, look, she's got the flight stakes at her mercy, I'd suggest. You know, she's... she's um, she you might have it's just something special about her. It's it? very hard though to have your first start back from what has been a pretty long spell, uh, a pretty hard cold winter by all accounts. Um, lead in a 1200 of the day, the Chelmsford Stakes. Over 1,600 metres, Chris Waller trains six out of the eight runners, uh, group one winners, left, right. Spur, he's out about three off the rail, entirely Platinum's hard ridden. Sacred Falls is running on, Royal Descent getting an inside run. Moriarty threading through in the centre. It's Royal Descent coming at Hawkspur. Sacred Falls still a length and a half away, and then Moriarty. Royal Descent has run through now to join Hawkspur, and there's nothing between these. It's Royal Descent, and on the outside of it, Hawkspur from Sacred Falls and Moriarty. Hawkspur's five. Riding back, Royal Descent, nothing in it. Royal Descent or Hawkspur, take your pick. And then there's a photo for third. Bagman's come through there with Sacred Falls and Moriarty. Better. Hawkspur lunges right on the line. Oh, I thought the inside, but maybe the outside. Then Moriarty, then Janoub. There's the photo. The outside gets it. Hawkspur goes back to back. Out the Chelms that he went back to back. Jim Cassidy for Chris Wallet. Chris with the first six across the line. So, uh, Ron, that was complete. Of course, Tiger Tees and Weary are the dominant players here in the Tramway Stakes. Lead from Fade on. Hooked has pulled its way up on the outside to almost join them. Monton down closer to the rail in fourth spot. And then further back we had Dan Chai, followed by Honorius Wearies in the centre. And Toydini, Tiger Tees, has got a kick in him and he kicked away now. Leads by a length and a half on Monton. Then Hooked and further back Fade on. Tiger Tees in front. Monton a half a length away on the inside. Lucia Valentina is rocketing home. Lucia Valentina. Valentina has come over the top of them and wins it from Tiger Tees. It's a photo for third. Toydini and Rising Romance from Villanova. Then Monton Gypsy Diamond followed by... She's a serious horse, this girl, by Savabil. Number 10, Lucia Valentina. She won the Storm Queen. In a race OK on the dry as well. well that was an outstanding well, win. Well, mate, you only got to look at every... No, no horse come from well no back. No one made ground. No one day. made ground all day. You would have laid, you would have stakes were probably, you know, better horses, but this race had the depth and there were plenty of live chances in this race. And look at her rocket home on a heavy track here. Now, Ty's just, Ty's just left us. Now, he rode uh, in the race and he said he's never seen one get home like that on a heavy track, just jump out of the ground like yeah. that. So it was, a, it was an enormous return to the track. One thing I will say about her. Well within himself. We've seen... No. OK, market mover is the cleaner. Uh, the cleaner, 480 into 440. He's been right at the top of the market all the way through. He's house firm late. Eight into $7. Forteller, the pattern read here, 550. Racing. And the cleaner jumps well. So too, star rolling. Four teller a bit and a half. Last is four teller. So the cleaner for Steve Ardell comes up the side. He leads by two lengths to star rolling. Cracker Jack King. A length away, Gricaro to Mourinho. Foundry ridden along. And then came Ladari starting to make ground on the offer. Took off. Back behind them then is Havastan beaten off. And Pakal a long way back. And four teller was last. So the cleaner. Here's his moment for the big time. He's a length in front of star rolling. Cracker Jack King. And then Gricaro and Mourinho and next was Ladari but the cleaner still in front coming around the home turn now from star rolling Cracker Jack King and Mourinho running on the cleaner by a length and a half you know he'll give everything star rolling Mourinho's coming the cleaner's hanging on though Mourinho driving in him but the cleaner won it the cleaner by a length Mourinho Forteller was the eye catcher getting home to grab third I'd say from either Ladari or uh, back on the inside was star rolling they were for the punters but for most of all the 
the fans of racing who come and adore this horse because of these great vogue like tactics rolling along in front. Not that hard early. Good race, Sam, and a result that I think plenty of punters will be happy to see. Yeah, what a great horse he is. Home, or the horses that go out in the front and break their hearts. And, uh, you know, we love the Kaluna. He, gave a, he got a huge cheer at Ramwick yesterday. Can he win the Cox boat? As you said, who cares? He's going to be there, and boy, oh, boy, we might just see a fair income run Cox plate. A couple of the back on his horse. I'm not saying he could win a Cox Plate, but I tell you what, he's going to make the Cox Plate because there'll be a brave person out there, the first yeah. one chasing him. I'll tell you, because it'll take. This is a stallion making race, and this year's edition is no different. A massive field and real quality gallopers. It is three dollars eighty the field, and it is the filly. Bring to the board here, hallowed crown. Got out to seven dollars now, six fifty. Kamean sixteen dollars, rock solid. Samus. Nine out to nine fifty. Fifty into five. Bring me the maid. Four into three dollars fifty. Scissor kickers right off the track. He's having a torrid run, followed by Scratch Me Lucky and Press Report. Hallowed Crown is tracking up three and four wide, followed by Backman. Then Sarajevo Kameon shooting to win and Modoc last of all. It's Egret in front. Lead from Sniper Fire. Better land chiming in on the outside. Nostradamus is cutting through with Alma Lad down to the inside. Hallowed Crown and Scissor Kicker coming down the outside. Scissor kick out in the centre with Hallowed Crown. They've moved up now to take over from Alma Lad and Nostradamus and then shooting to win Hallowed Crown is coming at Scissor Kick. Hallowed Crown and Scissor Kick. Hallowed Crown got his head in front. Hallowed Crown remains undefeated. Beats Scissor Kick photo for third between Alma Lad and shooting to win. Then in behind them Nostradamus followed by Bring Me the Maid press report Modoc. Number three Hallowed Crown. He makes it four starts, four wins. Hugh Bowman wins the feature. The Borderly Wines goal Row, and the horse that he had cover on was number five, Scissor Kick. Herculean performance by Scissor Kick was four. And, shooting to win. and that's four out of four for a Hallowed Crown, and that's four in the big race, the Golden Rose for Huey Bowman. And it's win. The back of, of Scissor Kick, uh, poor old Scissor Kick, he just dragged you around that course. Are you going to share some of your, your fee with Ty England? Because really, Ty just made that for well, you. Well, uh, one thing I can... Here's the market for the Danehill Stakes. This is one of the best races of the day. Some real talent on show here. Brazen Bow's your favourite for Chris Waller, of course, just a big winner in Sydney. Ghibellines and a fair way back go into goes back last with Onerous and Cornrow out very wide. They come to the 300. Brazen Bow goes to the lead now, but uh, Galaxy Pegasus and Rich Enough are joining in ahead of Stingray. And then came Looks Like the Cat at the 200 metres. Rich Enough takes the lead now from Brazen Bow. Looks Like the Cat and Ghibellines are starting to come home well. Rich Enough, the leader from Looks Like the Cat, about 50 to go. Rich Enough, three quarters. He's wandering around a little bit, but he'll get home. Rich enough beats. Looks like the cat by a neck. Three lengths away. Third, Ghibellines got home hard from Awesome Rock. Brazen Bow weakened and then Stingray Onerous. A break to Baluti. Moonlight Hut. Well, well done to Kenny Keys. He's got the horse a lifetime uh, he's waited to have. And uh, Rich Enough today, gee, was, uh, he was comprehensive, I thought. Runner-up's going to be good. Serious talent, Onerous. I really want to follow him. OK, out of the race. Brazen Bow, lame. Go, Indy, go. Yeah, look, I'm blown away by this horse. He, um, that going into this meeting... ...the last campaign, obviously capped off by the Caulfield Cup. And the Melbourne Cup run was excellent. And now he's, of course, an Emirates winner, course, and a distance. And should be ready to peak the day. Gets firm, probably for him. Well, I just love the way he put the race away. He set up for me over rain. One running of this year's Maccabi. Racing. And the starters caught them pretty well. Green Moon and Spillway go back in the early part. Faulkner got away well and Don Dorimo showing some speed with Poissant's Deloon. Dissident is up there with them and Messini about five wide from Green Moon is last. 900 left to go. Messini by a length. Dissident and they've got away six lengths in front. Don Dorimo and Faulkner the leader coming around the home turn. Dissident getting a little bit closer and so too is the field as they diminish that gap on the first two horses. Moving into third placing out wider was Sertorius in company with Faulkner and Super Cool's on the move behind them and Boban has threaded through. Schofield's got him in a challenging role. Messini at the 400 from uh, on the outside dissident. Bofin, Boban just behind them trying to find the way through. There's no gap at the moment and Faulkner's joining in followed by Poisson's Deloon. Dissident narrowly. Faulkner challenging at the 200. Boban with a needle eye gap on the inside which closed. Now it's Faulkner and Dissident with 100 to go. Dissident the inside and Faulkner. Dissident fighting on really strongly. Dissident just fell in from Faulkner, wanted a short half head, a length away third, Poisson's Deloon, Spillway got home, followed by Sertorius, Green Moon and the unlucky Boban, and further back was Super... 
Well, a truly legitimate wait for age star here, just and he gets the photo beating uh, Faulkner. What sort of campaign is he in for? Brilliant today, and Puisson Stallone runs a brave third here, but honours go to... A, a heap of good runs, but let's talk about him. Legitimate big-time player, wherever he goes. He's just gone to a new level, hasn't he, Bruce? His two runs, his preparation have been absolutely outstanding. Two Group 1 wins, and the toughness... There. About there, he might have headed him, and uh, Dissident lifted again. It's just a sign of a, a very good weight for age horse. He's got that turn of foot. He's got an ability to quicken. And you've got to have that to win weight for age and set weight type racing. And uh, he's got it. And, you know, yeah, he's got to go to the Cox Plate. I don't think there's any other... Epsom? Well... Could they not bring him up to Sydney and around? Um, we've only got seven minutes to go here, so I better get stuck in before I wax lyrical about the barriers 12 and 14 winning there in uh, Sydney. The Bobby Lewis comes up next. Uh, he was being followed Bon Hoffer, or Bon uh, Rocket, I should say. And uh, Lon is a fair way back. So is Aka Verinch. Attack was back about second last. Speediness is last. 300 to go now. Flambeur's moved up on the inside and went to the lead from Sistine Demon. Elmer's Fury running a race. Tango's daughter putting in a run the inside. Temple of Boom coming within cahoots. And Chatak with the widest runner. Uh, they're starting to storm to the leaders now. Out wider, Chatak was coming with a booming finish. He sprinted up on the outside, Chatak. Well, races away, Chitakwa draws clear by two links. Temple of Boom second, in cahoots and Sistine Demon side. Temple of Boom coming within cahoots and Chitakwa the widest runner. Uh, they're starting to storm to the leaders now. Out wider, Chitakwa is coming with a booming finish. He sprinted up on the outside, Chitakwa races away. Chitakwa draws clear by two links. Temple of Boom second, in cahoots and Sistine Demon for third with Akaburin and Speediness. Elmer's Fury just off them, followed closely in the the field on Spresso. Wow, what a win. Have a look at this in isolation if you can when you watch the replay. You watch Dwayne Dunn, he basically rides this like he knew that was going to happen. He sat at the back watching the yard. But he was half expecting it, you know, he's got a massive opinion. Spring here and now, and he wins like that first up, you've got to be uh, targeting some good... Two links, Temple of Boom second. Well, I thought uh, Speediness and Akavuran were good, but then they were in a different uh, different race to Chautauqua. Shark just descended on them. Not going to the Epsom. Uh, going to stay in Melbourne. Bring on here for Chautauqua. Ridiculous win, Bruce. Absolutely ridiculous. I can't remember an easier straight track win from a horse of that class. And he just embarrassed them, really. You know, as you said, Dunn was getting to them. Even the 300 when he asked him to go, he just had so much horse there. And that turn of Ford... I'm 21. Eight. Himself, but that was uh, that was impressive. I, I love. Look, Chris. <laughs> He was, he was, gets back on, he rode her at her first two wins. The best part was it was three lengths, it was dynamic, she blew them away. She's clearly the one to beat and she's really come on. And Costa Lager. Pover and also First Seal uh, looked at picture health in the yard, both parade. Already a surprise and got out to 380 pretty quickly, he's now back to 360. Peggy Jean, seven. Red light. Quake in front. Leads by three quarters of a length on the favourite. Winks and then first seal, Lady Sharapova. A half on the outside. Sultry feeling is wide. Alpha Miss was next and Peggy Jean back last of all. Hasn't been run to suit her. They've dawdled in front. Nearing the home bend. About 500 to go. Earthquake in front. Leads by a neck on Winks on the outside. So first and second favourites head up for home. In front of first seal, Lady Sharapova. Sultry feeling. It's Earthquake in front. Winks on the outside called on Earthquake about a neck in front at the moment. Then First Seal. Earthquake's responding here. He'll have to get busy on Winks and First Seal is running a race on the inside. Three of them settling down to fight it out. First Seal has hit the lead. Here's a boil over. Beat Winks and Earthquake. Followed by Alpha Miss and the insultory feeling Lady Sharapova and Peggy Jean at the back of the field. Well, we interviewed John Thompson before the race and first deal. And, uh, she's untapped, a uh, very, very high-class filly, and hopefully she can go on to bigger and better things. We're been... here for John Thompson. She upset the favourites in this race, and she's bred to get over a bit of ground too. They could get her up over 2,000 metres for sure, uh, uh, maybe look, more. She may have been 20 to 1, but there was no fluke in this performance. This is a high-class filly. Uh, always had got a few breaks, but her and Winks are two of the best three-year-old mile fillies in Australia. I've got no doubt about it. Back with Dean Pennant here at Ramwick. Alma's offers furniture the shorts. The sprint last of the day. Famous Seamus, 20 out to $21 sessions. 
Now as Richo made... Uh... Next followed by Whittington, Terra Vista, now forced out three wide. Session is directly behind it. And then Villa Verde, it just looks to be losing a little bit of ground there as they turn. Followed by I've Got the Look. So I'm all the talk. Kicked away up the rise. It's a couple in front, but Terra Vista is coming out of the pack out after it. I'm all the talk in front. Terra Vista in the centre of the track, moving up out after it. And then Sessions and Famous Seamus. Terra Vista took over with 100 to go. The favourite raced away. And Terra Vista, he is a winner. He goes down to win it from I'm all the talk or Famous Seamus. I've Got the Look Sessions. And then came in behind them next. Weddington didn't cost a lot. Wouldn't it be nice? Let me tell you, he's a serious racehorse. Uh, things didn't go really right. Corey Brown had to push the button early. Oh, I love the way what he... Went all right, that's eight out of 11 for him and sets up a clash with the world's best sprinter, allegedly, in Lankan Rupi in the Manicata. Of course, he runs in the Moya first ride today. In your column today, you say he could be the best sprinter in Australia, Terra Vista. Well, it's, it's looking one of two, either him or Lankan Rupi, and hopefully by the end of the spring we find out. Then This horse has never... Which is the next race, and that is Lankan Rupi. He's a short price favourite. Will the punters be a little gun shy? The two uh, short price favourites so far tonight. Then on the outside, Angelic Light. She gets the stalkers rolled again. And Rebel Dana Ling further back. It's buffering in front, coming down before the home turn. One length in front of Lankan Rupi is now just starting to get a little bit closer. Unpretentious Angelic Light poised for her run. Rebel Dana last. They swing around the turn. And buffering in front. He's about a half in front of Lankan Rupi. Knew it throwing everything at Lankan Rupi. Buffering nearly a length in front of him. Angelic Light coming on with 100 metres to go. Buffering only narrowly. Lankan Rupee and Angelic Light are coming at him. Buffering hanging on as they go to the line. And he's got it. He's won it again. Buffering. He's fallen in. He's won it by about a long head to either Rebel Dane or Lankan Rupee. Rebel Dane really rocketing the inside. They're followed then by Angelic Light who just petered out a little bit late and unpretentious. You are an absolute champion, Buffering. You've... Uh... <laughs> You've unfortunately chased in his career. He's chased the mighty Black Caviar. And he's just so brave, isn't he? And he's ridden by... No, buffs back. That's two for buffering uh, Moya Stakes. And, uh, like, Joe you know, he has been just a marvel <laughs> in his own right. You know, Group 1 standard for a number of seasons now. Two different circumstances, and Froggy, Froggy didn't adapt. Uh, first up, he was soft a 1,000 metres, and all he wanted to do was chase from the moment. He jumped a length in front on Friday night. Blind Freddy knew he should have led. Um, he could have led. They would have, he would have won the race. Still that... And four Group 1 races in the last 12 months, and placed uh, in quite a few as well. His overall record run, 43 runs, 16 wins, 17 placings, nearly all in top company. Well, his record speaks for itself, doesn't it? He, we named him the Bulldog, and, he, and that is exactly what he is. First leg of the quaddy. It's the Stan Fox Stakes, a group two level over the 1,500 metres, and a very smart group of three-year-old Colts to go around here. Is it a race in two punters? Think a length on Modoc, scissor kick doing it tough on the outer, then shooting to win, scratch me lucky, award of merit next from Backman and Volley of Fire. Five lengths covers them as they uh, round the home turn now with about 450 to run. And it's Valentia from Modoc, scissor kick challenge, on the outside, shooting to win or get the rails run here as the leaders left the fence and then further back, scratch me lucky it's Valentia in front, scissor kicks immediately under the whip, shooting to win on the inside and then further back volley of fire, Valentia's in front but shooting to win's grabbed it, he's hit the front now, shooting to win, he's sprinted away and then Valentia and scissor kick and shooting to win's going to be too good, overcomes that slow start, scissor kick might get second from Valentia and then came Backman followed further back in behind them as they cross him. Running through the line there at the end of 1500 in the Stan Fox. He's a brother to the super uh, prospect in deep field who will discuss later. Cost 160,000. He's still too good. He was a uh, dominant winner there. He's a very, very good colt. Um, and he's right up there with the best of them. I think the dry track... Look, you can argue very strongly he wins that race with even luck. That group one I'm talking about up north behind El Malad, who's just won the uh, scared stiff uh, of him and uh, made him the danger. Awesome rock out to 1,400. Yeah, uh, Richie's bickies, but rich enough there you can see. Top mark of 460. And they're off. And now Vespa jumps pretty well. Gibberline slow from the outside. Rich Enough began fast and so did Lucky Tom and Liberation away very quickly as they run through the first part of the race with Armada up there also. And now and it's our Vespa pushing up but can't hold Liberation who pressed on with a slender lead. Armada's there and Rich Enough about three wide going on. Lucky Tom in behind them. Soldi Amati's tough enough. He'd done a bit of work but he's up within the length of the leader now. Our Vespa's third on the inside, a half two. On the outside next is Armada. They're two 
lengths further back to Soldi Damati, who's covering up uh, Lucky Tom, and then came Looks Like the Cat. He's got seven to make up, and then Convincible and Moonlight Hustler, and Awesome Rocks got away from the rail as they swing around the turn, and it's Liberation first for home, with Rich Enough coming at it strongly on the outside, and then Armada. Our Vespers getting up on the inside. Looks like the Cat a fair bit to do, and Rich Enough darted away now past the 200. He's opened up three lengths on them. He's away, and he's gone. Rich Enough racing away. Looks like the Cat getting into second placing, but Rich Enough has bolted in by two lengths. Looks like the Cat second uh, and getting up for third. Awesome Rock, one outside and then Armada. Our Vespers getting up on the inside. Looks like the Cat a fair bit to do and Rich Enough darted away now past the 200. He's opened up three lengths on them. He's away and he's gone. Rich Enough racing away. Looks like the Cat getting into second placing, but Rich Enough has bolted in by two lengths. Looks like the Cat second uh, and getting up for third. Awesome Rock, one Jenna ran on strongly today and then came Armada, followed by our Vesson. Wow, what a star. Rich enough. Worked up early, worked up the hill, but just travelled on beautifully uh, on uh, Michael Rod's long reign here. Well, that been a great weekend for Kenny Keys. Well done to him. Rich enough on here, basically. Going. That's six lengths quicker than the girls. Yeah, superstar. Superstar. Sits uh, up, up second. He does a bit of work into the breeze from that awkward gate. Just darted away from them. As soon as they straightened, he put a gap on a, a real quality group of males and race over. Look, looks like the cat runs. His form is so frank now with Brazen Bay going so well in, in, in Sydney star. as well. This this horse just keeps climbing the ladder. Every time they put the bar up, he jumps it. And uh, I don't know quite how far he goes. He looks like a genuine sprinter to me, but as a three-year-old, he might go all. He might go the mile. He might go a little bit further. This is just a. This is just a, a crushing. It looks like the cat. I think is a really good three-year-old, but. This, this horse just go put a clinic on. Could he be one of these freaks that, that wins the guineas and comes back and wins the cool mall? Could. Could. Can't say no, can you? Well, you well, well, he's 60 there at the moment in the, uh, the guineas market. Well, from what we've seen so far, he's probably deservedly so. It's, uh, he... He's bad in this. It's an old-fashioned handicap with uh, Dissident, the big, big uh, star of the race with 58 kilos, and they don't carry that very often to win this race. You've got to go back a long time and trust in the gas down near the minimum here, the favourite at six. Home turn followed by speediness and well back as they sweep the turn as Gig and then Elmer's Fury and Cluster into the straight and it's Sistine Demon the leader from Trust and Agast the first to throw out the challenge and running on now Dissident and here comes Late Charge in the line blinkers. Sweet idea looking for the way clear. Trust and Agast broke to the lead at the 200. Dissident starting to warm to the task. Bullpoint Akaburan coming and Sweet idea getting up on the inside. Dissident race to Trust and Agast. 50 to go. Dissident takes the lead. He wants to lay in, Trust in the Gust kicks back a photo finish between Dissident and Trust in the Gust, a bob and go, who got the bob, Bullpoint charges home and grabs third, just ahead of and it's Trust in a Gust, the winner, horse number 13, it's a first group one in Victoria for Darren Weir and a first group one here for Damien Lane, what a try this horse is, ok he's got in a first group one here for Damien Lane, what a try this horse is, ok he's got six kilos off the very brave a uh, dissident here who's tried so hard. Buyers for him, or just stable mates or what? No, no, we had no one for it. Um, John Foote picked him out and... Um ...runs on Super Saturday at Ramwick is the Star Epsom Handicap. A terrific race over the classic mile here at Ramwick and into the mounting yard to have a look at... Coda racing greenly at the back of the field. 600 out, it's fate on in front. Leads from Woodbine. Hooked has had a torrid run. He's coming up around the outside with Laser Hawk. They're three and four wide, followed by Ninth Legion. Royal Descent sits on the back of the leaders as they turn from Lucky Chappie. And he's your man as further back, Hooked to the outside. It's fate on in front. Hooked is charging up on the outside, followed by Royal Descent. Liberty's Choice is trying to get through in the middle, so is Boban, he's your man is down the outside, Ninth Legion getting a rails run, it's Royal Descent putting a head in front, he's your man is coming after it, Royal Descent a half in front he's your man lunging on the outside very tight, he's your man a Royal Descent, tight finish hooks in a photo for third with a Norius fade on a Ninth Legion and he'll get it, but which way Royal Descent, he's your man oh very very close there's no doubt he's your man was in front, and then the bob comes back the other Outside. Is it, you sure? Oh, I'm not sure. Six wins, number six. Six wins. He's your man, gets the bickies, Jaso, he's your man. He nailed him right on the line, he's your man. As All of it, they just, they seem to be a happy marriage. Been pretty good to me.
effort. Um, the rest of it just played out as it played out. There are a few very good runs in this. Uh, Royal Ascent. I mean, she's going beautifully. I mean, the ride she, deserved a better fare. Yeah, it was a pearl of a ride. It was an absolutely gun ride. And look, she just got surprised by this horse on the line. Mm. I reckon, you know, if it goes another 10 strides, she fights back and maybe gets her head in front. But mm. so she was. Defeat. Let her have it and then have the last shot at them. Last start, she was the hunted. Let her become the hunter because I think she really had three winners today, including the group one. He's very kind with his time. Number two is first seal. This is the big danger to Winks, Johnny Thompson, and Blake Shin. Have a look at her. 270. There's not much between them. This is the group one for the three older fillies. It's the Coolmore Flight Stakes. Let's head upstairs. Well, Echo Gals in front and lead from press report. Nothing's made a move as yet, followed by Dynamic Rock. First seal poised behind the leaders coming to the home turn and then winks over on the rail thinking of you on the outside and Lady Sharapova. Five lengths covers and they turn. He pulls out now on first seal. It's Echo Gal in front leads from press report. First seal is about to pounce on the outside Winks is trying to go with it and thinking of you but first seal exploded she raced away at the 200 from Echo Gal then Winks press report and thinking of you but first seal get in the queue if you're on it it's raced away and first seal's going to be much too good wins it by three. Winks is second. Thinking of you might have got third in front of press report. Thinking of you, but first seal exploded. She raced away at the 200 from Echo Gal. Then Winks press report and thinking of you, but first seal get in the queue if you're on it. It's raced away and first seal's going to be much too good. Wins it by three. Winks is second. Thinking of you might have got third in front of press report. Then Lady Sharapova, Echo Gal and last in was Dynamic Rock. She's the dominant three old filly first seal. That was electrifying. When she can think of you, might have got 30. Wow, what a performance. Uh, she's emerged on the scene, this $700,000 fast net rock filly under the guidance of John Thompson. To invest uh, money into Australian racing, and they've got a very smart filly here with first seal. Uh, could be the best one he's had, I'd say for sure. She, she's an outstanding filly. Um, she just blew away a pretty good field there, and she did it with style. Um, when first seal went bang like this. He's put two, two and a half, three lengths on, on Winks in the space of 50 to 100 metres. I mean, that's, that's a, a, a very good performance. I don't think Winks went quite as well. Um, we, and I, I, the rest of the field was reasonably uncompetitive. So I, I, I'm going to be forgiving for Winks there. I think she's still immature. Mm. She's still got a bit of growing and strengthening up to do. Mm. Uh, wait for her in the autumn. Mm. She's, she's top shelf as well. Mm. This is the uh, Gill guy coming up with uh, a small field, but an intriguing race with the favourite Chautauqua. A swooping wide when the last time out, drawing the inside gate here, bounding. Another speed runner fist. And uh, all silent. There might be shades of all silent here with Chautauqua. A similar racing, a racing pattern here. Just in behind the speed is final crescendo. Uh, now let's see Chautauqua's plotting his course down towards the inside there. River Lad between horses. Limes back towards the end. Longmar's a long way back in the field and Smoke and Joey down the outside. Coming to the 300 metres now and it's bounding the leader from Temple of Boom and Chautauqua getting up on the inside. Il Cavallo wider was beaten off and then River Lad running on. Here's Chautauqua let go at the clock tower and he's darted up and he's claim bounding in Temple of Boom and he's away and gone and it's uh, going to be a repeated last time he's racing away impressively again Chautauqua by three or four to bounding good photo for third Herman Chautauqua getting up on the inside Il Cavallo wider was beaten off and then River Lad running on here's Chautauqua let go at the clock tower and he's darted up and he's claim bounding and Temple of Boom and he's away and gone and it's uh, going to be a repeated last time he's racing away impressively again Chautauqua by three or four to bounding good photo for third uh, getting up on the inside final crescendo will probably get it ahead of River Lad Temple of Boom and then Il Cavallo, Flamberg. Wow, what about that? Who said one alley was a problem? Wouldn't matter if it had 21 alley, it would have won the same. Great to see the now Satan because it's just too good, but that's, uh, you know, obviously the Daly's there for him if you want to keep him to straight racing. What uh, what are you thinking? Well, I mean, we're going to side with him keeping the straight racing. We'll run him in, run him in a race like the Emirates. So. What a bounding. Good photo for third. Well, bring it on. Bring it on, Slade Power. Bring on Lankin Rupee. Bring on Terra Vista. Wouldn't that be a beaut race up the straight? Uh, bounding maintains that one. This is awesome. Oh, amazing win again, you know. Straight, picked up where he left off in the Bobby Lewis, just cruising in behind the pack there. 
picking up beautifully and so easily, easily onto the leaders' backs and then exploding away. You know, what an exciting horse. He got me up and out of my seat yesterday screaming and get, get them up and about and buzzing about the Spring Carnival. Yeah, he's going to be a, a real hard horse to beat when he goes to that Group 1 Daly Classic. If that's where he goes, they're also talking the, uh, the Emirates Stakes, Bruce. Touch of all silent about him. Well, he's pretty good up the straight. Why would you change that? Oh, well, exactly. Yeah, tell Johnny take Hawks, him uh, on. Exciting horse, Paul. Those wins down the straight there at Flemington. Uh, overall, he's won four out of nine, and he certainly looks like one of the most ex exciting sprinters in the country at the moment. He, he just has that wow factor. The land. Um, um, but Who would you want to back between him and Lankan Rupee right now? <laughs> well, uh, I want to back Terra Vista. <laughs> well, there's another one. <laughs> there's a couple more. Yeah. That, you know, we've got some really yeah. exciting young talent sprinters that are untapped as if this horse he's very good he's absolutely explosive he ran his his last thousand meters in 54 and change now the the record's 55 but that's off a standing start he's off the flying start here but have a look at this he just let him go wow. i don't even think he really you know, he gave him a couple of cuts to keep his mind on the job but he just gets getting further in front and when you think of it you know she's a good he's good man uh, bounding and Templar Boom's a fantastic straight, yeah. straight course horse, yeah. and he met him. I think there was a six kilo turnaround in the wake yesterday. Just left him in his wake. Uh, exciting prospect. Mm. I still Prince. look at this market. Here's the, the you know, Jeff, we got they a, all turn up on the day. Throw in deep field there as that's well. The best. Deep field's what the a horse that broke that is. a course record at his second start. There. I know if that's it, the race of the spring. If it if it all works, it won't out. happen. We won't get them all there. Surely, I would love to think well, we would, but. Well, the Turnbull Stakes. Let's have a look at them. The favourite in the ring is Puissance de Lune, but this super popular horse of Paul Bashar is Happy Trails is your tote favourite, such as the Agile. About seven off the leader, Lucia Valentina looking for the way clear from the inside. They're being followed as they sweep to the turn. Thoughtworthy is pulled out around side of the Chiva. Lucia Valentina, Happy Trails as well back as they corner. And then Green Moon pulled to the outside and Hawksbird awards the end in company with Shoreham. Entirely platinum first into the straight from Let's Make a Deal. Here comes Ladari with his run, and Bramble's trying to push through as well ahead of Super Cool. Puissant Stallone coming down the outside, and Happy Trails is sneaking runs along the inside. At the 200 metres now, and Ladari and Bramble's race up, and here's Lucia Valentina coming with Puissant Stallone. They're down the outside together. It's Bramble's Ladari and Lucia Valentina joining in. Bramble's Ladari, Lucia Valentina comes home the best, and she's got up and won it. Lucia Valentina by a neck to either Ladari or Bramble's for the Midas. They got away to Puissant Stallone, followed closely then. And I felt that. Come on, guys, but uh, all systems go for a fortnight's time. Yeah, it was, Bruce. I rushed down. Um of the Melbourne Cup. Uh, best day I won there yesterday. There's a heap of uh, tales of woe here, primarily happy trails where the Cox Plate, he's got something to give in the Cox Plate, but Lucia Val... It's certainly going into a Group 1 race, it's not ideal. So uh, she can improve big time off that. Yeah, she's, she's come up big time, hasn't she? She was devastating, obviously, first up. So and she backed it up yesterday, and boy, she showed them older horses up. These four-year-olds are really showing these older horses yeah. up at the moment. You got dissident. The last hundred metres just sat up on the horse, and the horse finished well back, but he would have finished a lot closer. Uh, Lucha Valentina, I didn't give a crack, and this is the first of the Group Ones. It's the Caulfield Stakes for Cathay Pacific. Here's your market for it, and the favourite is dissident, the local for Peter Moody. It's been the benchmark weight for age horse going into the day, and can he come out and bounce into a cox play? And last towards the turn, Sacred Falls. So side glance, a neck in front of Dissident, Cracker Jack King coming on, Faulkner right behind them's had a beautiful run, then Happy Trails and Dear Demi as they sweep around the home turn, and Sacred Falls are still well back. Side glance is joined on the outside by Dissident now. Faulkner's in the clear running on, and then came Dear Demi, and a break to Sacred Falls. At the 150, Faulkner's raced up. Dissidents wilting a little bit. Side glance fighting back, and here's Criterion. Faulkner breaks to the lead. Criterion's a late challenger. Faulkner hanging on, and he's got in from Criterion. Side glance two lengths away third. Sacred Falls from last got home to get fourth, and then Happy Trails. Dissident failed to run the trip, and then Sertorius did. What a race. What a race. So much to analyse here. The winner's Faulkner right into the Cox Plate calculations now. Then the Melbourne Cup. He's a winner of a Caulfield Cup. Now a Caulfield Stakes. He holds off Criterion, who's building nicely for the Cox Plate. Side glance off. He was yeah. good and side glance solid here. Uh, obviously, the story of the race where he dissident it was right home betting for the Cox Plate bled. Yeah, unfortunate result. Just a couple of queries on the field. Faulkner favour from Sacred Falls Criterion. Side glance will be out of that market going to. He's, he's got a bit of a, 
it's a year where we're lacking a class horse. He's got a bit of a saintly look about him, this horse, this year, where um, he could even go on after the Cox Plate and, and be very, very competitive in another Melbourne Cup. Yesterday. He runs it. And Happy Trails was OK. He sticks on well late. Yep. This is the Cox Plate form. Read it as you want to read it and but bet accordingly. The winner of the Cox Plate's in there. Is that uh, what you think? Well, unless this Adelaide is something out of the box, but yeah. I'd, I'd be... Let's see it. Yeah, uh, there's the yearly tapes. It's opened up $1.70 on Super Tab, uh, number three, rich enough. $1.90. In, in, in indications to their thoughts and, mm. and clear thoughts uh, when so much must be running through their minds. Indeed. Uh, thanks for that. Big Mark, have a look, they're still pouring this on for Rich Enough. This yeah. was 270 early in the week. And Zululand away quickly, shooting to win, and Moon Over Manhattan are all up there in the early part. And Elmer Lad's trapped out wide, and he's about the middle of the field. Now, Rich Enough does his work, he gets over, and the favourite finds the lead as he goes to the top of the hill. So it's chivalry last of all. 7.50 to go, and Rich Enough by a half Elmer Lad, a length and a half Moon Over Manhattan. Looks like the cat having a hard run out wide. He's gone up to fourth, and then Stingray shooting to win, followed by Zebulon. A length further back, Kamayan and Lucky Tom. Zululand nowhere to go as Merion took off and then Wanjana and Chivalry will be last as they sweep towards the turn. Rich Enough is now being pressured well before the bend by El Maled. The pressure's right on here as they swing. Shooting to win, poised the outside. Moon over Manhattan is next and then looks like the cat, but Rich Enough he sprinted at the top of the straight. He leads by a length, coming home well, shooting to win. Inside the 200, it's Rich Enough by a half, shooting to win coming at him they look like fighting it out shooting to win on the outside and rich enough shooting to win's put his head in front Kamayon's flying home with Wanjana but shooting to win just in front and he's won it by a head to rich enough a photo third between Wanjana and Kamayon a break further back in the field then came Chivalry and Merion followed back I'm not really sure but um, you know it's a bit hard to be too disappointed with him so you know we'll, we'll, we'll restock and we will be right the jockey at the time is unbelievable he feels top class and um he looks a top class racehorse, he's very furnished, he's um, big, strong, got a lot of physique about in Sydney. Because he's a brother to deep field, so the value is there, Shark, isn't it, in terms it of is, no doubt, yeah. all the studs yeah. that were chasing Kenny Keyes last week will be chasing uh, <laughs> Trevor and Penny. Uh, I wouldn't have thought much interest would drop off from Rich enough either, uh, as you said, just so brave in defeat. Looking back on that stewards footage. Is but I think people know what I mean there. Um, I, I was... I thought I still think Rich Enough's a very, very well, good horse. I don't horse. think anyone doubts that. Yeah. Just a special mention. Of the day, the City Tats Lightning Stakes. It's a good race coming up. And, well, this is, is this the horse of all come to see? Maybe. His name is Deepfield. He's a dominant favourite for the race. But some handy horses here to take him on. We start with Roll. He's just cruising around the yard here. He's three for three. And uh, look, he's he's on the limit weight. He drops four kilos. Five off the lead, and Aeronautical is at the back. Into the straight, deep field from Barb. That's a good idea, Ken Seller. Shamalia in five. Wouldn't it be nice to the outside from Aeronautical? Deep field under a hole. They top the rise. It leads by a length to Barb. That's a good idea. Shamalia down the outside. Deep field. He hasn't moved. 150 metres to go now. He does. Two legs. That's a good idea. Shamalia, Barb. But deep field is coming away. Explosive again. A big winner, deep field by two and a half. That's a good idea. Shamalia, barbed aeronautical, Ken Seller. Wouldn't it be nice last in 103.39? Wow. Uh, that's what they came to see, and he didn't disappoint. He makes it four from four. We've seen two very serious... What we uh, get up every morning for, for when you're a kid at 15, 16 years old. Um, to ride horses like him, um, yeah, it's a big thrill, Rich. He just travelled sweet. Wow. Pretty good, Rich. Yeah, very good. And the sectionals were very good on the way that the, the track was playing. 33. Melbourne on the strength of that performance. Blue, 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 no, you know. classic. Well, would they take on Chautauqua? I'm not quite sure. That's the would it be the deep end? Would it be the deep end? I don't think, at this stage, I don't think it's got a hope of beating Chautauqua. Okay. I wouldn't mind moaning the mayor, though. Listen here. Yeah. Oh, Shooting point. to win, deep field. Week to week. Media. Oh. Underneath, Grant Brenton of Duller. I thought he might have been just one of these fierce going sprinters, but when they, they left him alone, he come back underneath of Duller and just bowed the head there, and that's what I like to see, good horses being able to relax no matter what distance they're in. And look... Uh, this is a good win without wowing about it. It was a, uh, he he was left alone. He sprinted home. Fence there eyeing him off. So well, he, his, his brother <laughs> won a Group One last week, didn't yeah, he? he uh, shooting yeah, to win his younger brother, brother yeah, Northfield no. Guineas. Yeah. He's, look, I agree entirely with what you've just said. That that win did. Welcome back here at Caulfield uh, to uh, to Brent Zarafa. Brent, uh, 
doesn't it? I'm not sure what it says, but I like it. I'm liking what he's putting out here today. This is a very good Japanese stay of this one at his best 2400 metre run. Putting out here today, this is a very good Japanese stay of this one at his best 2400 metre run. He was fourth, beaten a length to Gentle Donna, who is a global superstar. That was in a Japan Cup last year. He beat home Dunedin in that race, who we've seen win a Caulfield Cup. Top weights recently have won this race, include Northerly Viewed and Dunedin. He'd be better at Flemington at two miles, but he can win this. He's running well enough, Shark. He's second up here today. Caulfield, it is the Cup. The Caulfield Cup for 2014. And uh, they, as you can see, are in the race this has been for so many years. So many champions have won it. Uh, one of my earliest memories. Up next. Well, let's go to Greg Miles for the 2014 Crown Gold now Caulfield Cup. Taking off now is Ladari with his run and then came Admire Recti and behind them is Stipulate as they race down the side. It's Seamoon, the leader from Hawkesburg and Brambles. Janu putting in a run at the 600 metres. Staying to the inside is Rising Romance and she's getting beautiful rails runs there and Ladari starting to come into it and also Green Moon has got through near the inside but Rising Romance along the rails has taken the lead with Brambles followed by Hawkesburg. Why to Moriarty and who shot the Marvin and Admire Recti and Lucia Chia Valentina have come extremely wide. Rising Romance down to the 200, led by two links from Brambles, Hawkesburg, Ladari. Here's Admire Recti starting to run on, but Rising Romance at the 100 by about a length and a half. Admire Recti mows her down. Admire Recti raced up to Rising Romance. They come to the line. Admire Recti in the last stride beat Rising Romance. A photo third. Lucia Valentina flashed home. I think she might have been. Lucia Valentina have come extremely wide. Rising Romance down to the 200, led by two links from Brambles, Hawkesburg, Ladari. Here's Admire Recti starting to run on, but Rising Romance at the 100 by about a length and a half. Admire Recti mows her down. Admire Recti raced up to Rising Romance. They come to the line. Admire Recti in the last stride beat Rising Romance. A photo third. Lucia Valentina flashed home. I think she might have got it ahead of Brambles, Ladari and Dereldo. Hawkesburg, Janoub, followed by Green Moon. Seismos, big memory. We saw I Popper, Delta Blues, Pop Rock all run well in it, but the best horse in the race, I'm sure Greg Carpenter's pleased. Not worry about him. 58 kilos. Admire Racti wins. Rising Romance couldn't have been given a better run. Rising Romance, but that excuses. This is the best stayer, a mile and a half, and bring on the Melbourne Cup. He is a beast, Bruce. He's a beast, this boy, my rack. He's got the pom pom on his head. He's got the pom. Too strong. At around 12.80 and 4.40 on the tote. 13 into $11 on track. Really well backed. Rising Romance, $12 for a present and then close on you. And James was absolutely mystified that a horse was able to run him down because he said mm. when he kicked on the turn, he said Rising Romance really sprinted quickly. He said he thought he'd done more than enough to get a home in the race. He said just goes to show how strong these Japanese stayers are. And Richie Kondo, the colourful owner. Wonderful job with her and she wasn't stopping. I couldn't, I honestly couldn't not believe I got beat. Seriously, I was... I was God smack one run past me. She had us in the Japan Cup last year behind Gentle mm. Donna. Look, we've seen it before, Richard. These, uh, these Japanese horses, they're very, very hard to beat. Look, I, I've said it a million times, but people underestimate how strong the Japanese racing industry is. It is incredibly strong. Uh, we don't see many of their horses come down here. Admire Rakti would be in their top ten horses. Don't let people think he's a C grade or he's a handicapper over there. He's not. He's one of their top ten horses. But to be able to travel, sit three deep on a track you've never seen before, not having had a run for 167 days. It's just a phenomenal effort from a phenomenal racehorse. And behind them... What were the good Melbourne Cup trials? Well, eyes for the winner. You know, what do we do with him? How do we... Interesting, tomorrow, 11.30, we'll f week, we were saying, oh, this protectionist, he's uh, going to run a short price favourite. Here we go. Uh, a week later now, we've got Admirer Racti and Lucia Valentina. Hard... See their group one chance in the big one, $1 million. A wait for age sprint, and it is a classic race. 12 runners, eight of them already group one runners. And let's have a look at the runners, and we'll chat to all the key trainers, all the key trainers, as we build up to the big one, the Sporting Bet Manor. Ricardo Stakes, wait for age, over 1,200 metres, and we start with the... Racing now, buffering began fast, Lankin Rupee beat him out, and Newitt put his foot straight on the accelerator, and it's Lankin Rupee, the leader, but buffering kicking up is about three quarters away, also showing speed, not listening to me, Tepple of Berman, bounding, went forward, but she couldn't get in, she's gone back, and Lankin Rupee sped across, and at the 800, he's in front, by a length and a half, buffering to second, not listening to Seamus, two lengths away, 
so Lincoln Rupee tries to back it off. Leads by three quarters to Buffering. A length and a half, not listening to me. Temple of Boom wide, Angelic Light in the centre. They're followed then by Moment of Change coming around the outside and Terra Vista can't get a run and Norkin Rebel Dane. And Lankan Rupee's going for home. Buffering's trying to go with him. Lankan Rupee about a length in front and then Temple of Boom not listening to me. Down the outside, Terra Vista. Lankan Rupee in front. Buffering trying to get him. Lankan Rupee three quarters clear. Down the outside, Terra Vista flying home. They swarm to the line about five or six across. Lincoln Rupi, I reckon he might have held on. They're everywhere across the course here. Famous Seamus, Terra Vista. Uh, Terra Vista, Lincoln Rupi in front. Buffering trying to get him. Lincoln Rupi, three quarters clear. Down the outside, Terra Vista flying home. They swarm to the line about five or six across. Lincoln Rupi, I reckon he might have held on. They're everywhere across the course here. Famous Seamus, Terra Vista, uh, Rebel Dane, Angelic Light. Don't hold me to any of these placings for sure. Buffering is just off them. Uh, Temple of Boom Week. He does not get any better than that. And the world's highest ranked sprinter will win. Lincoln Rupi. Well, Craig knew it just said. Uh, Guys, congratulations. Excitement or relief? Oh, gee, I was uh, very relieved. It was a gutsy ride. It was a gutsy decision to cross buffering, but... Um, Six across. Lincoln Rupee, I reckon he might have <laughs> Still worth watching, isn't it? It is <laughs> quite amazing. OK, there's 28 unlucky runners in the 12-horse field. Lincoln Rupee ran about race in total. And I'll, I'll say, I'll say, best horse won on the night. Okay. No doubt in the world, best horse won on the night. Did all the work early and then was brave in the end. Yeah, there was only unlucky... But attracted from the excitement well, of that last It was last a bit like Rubitano's new market when there yeah. was... But now, because did, it was the Valley, it yeah, was even better. Even better. Did Terry Bailey... On Friday nights, did he feel like the same horse that absolutely dominated, dominated the sprints in the autumn? He did, mate. Uh, what he did Friday night, I think he's probably the only horse in Australia that could have could have done it both ends and, and held on. Um, I think his sectionals from the 1,000 to the 600 was 21.3 or something, which not many horses can do it, mm. let alone... And maintain it. Let alone sustain it. Um, he didn't get much of a breed that. I had to get going again and... I know there was a lot of hard luck runs behind him, but no horse had a tougher run than him. And he can line up again, and then you've got the, the couple of other ones. So it's going to be a great race. OK, we might just have one. And uh, the Cox Plate is uh, making its way down at the straight. Oh, it's... Um what an exciting touching on the market for the Cox Plate. 23 minutes out where Faulkner and Super Tap is still at $4.10 favourite. $7.49 and $6 on tats. There you go. Faulkner's your favourite. Runner's about to be called in. They're at the stalls. Four to one. He's missing out wide. Side glance up there with Al Malad. He's still three wide. So the cleaner's still four deep past the 1600. And Faulkner gets a lovely trail off that leading quartet. He's in fifth placing. Royal descent on the outside of Santa de Chiva. A further two lengths further back in the field came Happy Trails is over on the rails. There's Swainus or rather Adelaide starting a move around the outside now as they go to the 800 metres and then Guest of Honor Sacred Falls criterion. And Swainus is now back last. So the cleaner, this is where he puts his foot down and he leads by two and a half. Arnold winding it up in the Cox Plate from in second placing Wanjana around the outside of El Malad. Here comes Faulkner with his run, followed by Side Glance. Back behind those horses, then Silent Achiever starting to thread away through the field with Royal Descent. And Adelaide's on a mission around the outside. He's coming with a swooping run now. To the home turn, the cleaner joined by Wanjana and Faulkner. Adelaide continuing his resolute run around Silent Achiever and then Side Glance. Faulkner first for the judge. Adelaide ran to second from Silent Achiever and Side Glance. A metres to go. It's Faulkner tackled by Adelaide. Charlotte Achievers coming home well. Adelaide Faulkner. Adelaide on the outside in front and Adelaide has won the Cox Plate from a lineup. Faulkner's there with side glance for Teller. Happy trails all in photo finishes. Close up as Charlotte Achiever. Just behind them is the cleaner. Followed then. Victory and it goes to a little powerful Coolmore operation for Aidan O'Brien and Ryan Moore. This horse who started his life on the racetrack a year year ago at Leopardstown on wet ground winning a maiden wins his Cox Plate in Australia for Ryan Moore in cracking time 2 3.76 just two tenths outside Martin Powell's record that's how hard they went they went the first 1200 in 114 Seven, two and nine numbers confirmed for the Cox Plate took off wide no trail from a long long way it had to be a thousand meters out
He just kept coming and coming. Two. And he had to come back around here. But it was a phenomenal performance. Don't worry about looking for unlucky runners. No. He, <laughs> took, he took off before the 1,000 and kept, kept going. going. At the top of the straight... Oh. A shoot there and he pops out. You can't believe a horse... A three-year-old Northern Hemisphere time can sustain a thousand-metre run like this, proving his absolute quality. No, I think that's right. I mean, that, that was a race might have run. It might have been equivalent to a 2,400-metre sure. race. So, you know, he had had the staying ability to kick in, and I think we saw that today. I thought his biggest just... asset coming in was going to be if he could get a drag up and then out dash them. And he did because I've seen his great turn of foot in mm. Europe and in America. Mm. I that was that was another another level. They're cleaning us up, but. You know, we've got to ask ourselves some hard questions. Our biggest races are all middle distance and long distance races, and here we are, we've got nothing. Well, hopefully we can win the sprints <laughs> we, <laughs> during, well, yeah. during the carnival. We opened the door, and in they came. They certainly did. They did. Level, they're becoming very expensive, and I do believe that there is a place for the... Uh, uh, staying kind of stallion to produce that kind of horse. I think the tide will turn and I think that with horses like Adelaide, like Camelot, like It's a Done Deal and others, I think that we will produce those horses ourselves. James, tell us a little the favourite for the race. Oh, he was brave. He carted the field up and, you know, obviously the time says it was a, a pretty high pressure race and nearly broke the course record, although the track was playing fast, I must say. But look, go onto his nose, he just knuckles there and you'll see Happy Trails Whoa, rare gee, as well. nearly Probably fell there. You know, we can go back and see Happy Trails in barrier two. He goes up in the air and he, he, he's lost two lengths at the start and he, he doesn't get beat far in this race as well. So, now, what look, about, what about those days have all but disappeared with only brambles heading to the Cup out of the McKinnon this year. The race has, however, now become one of the more competitive on Derby Day and it was no different in 2014. Criterion and Rising Romance, both Group 1 winning three-year-olds in the autumn, were among the leading contenders, as was He's Your Man, looking to give Walla and Marira another Group 1. And the always consistent at this level, Happy Trails. So it's Brambles coming down towards the home turn. He's the leader from Mourinho. Farage out wider. Amrella's waiting on the run with Star rolling behind them and then Criterion and Hawkesburg. And he's your man out a bit wider ahead of Rising Romance in the orange colours. So they swing into the straight now past the 500 metres. Brambles against the inside from Mourinho. Farage strikes on the outside. Star rolling. They're followed then by Amrella. And down the outside, Criterion and he's your man. They're coming in. Happy Trails, the widest right across the track here it's Farage on the outside here's Joe starting to wind up he's your man and happy trails for Ollie these great riders come to the lead together happy trails on the outside and he's your man happy trails and he's your man happy trails the outside he's your man oh nothing in that happy trails and he's your man and a great photo ahead of Farage it was a stirring battle between two of the best, Damien Oliver on Happy Trails and Joe Marira on He's Your Man, with the local getting the Group 1 glory. The win after luckless runs in earlier spring features was the Paul Bashara trained Gelding's third group Paul Bashara trained Gelding's third Group 1 success. Each coming through them, Shark, your top four for Tuesday. Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto. Admire Rakti to do it for <laughs> Japan. I've been with him. Admire Rakti. Defied what was a slowly run Caulfield Cup. I think he'll relish two mile off form. And Mutual Regard is a horse that I'm quite keen on. To beat Faulkner, admire. It is. So. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm well aware of. Yeah. Uh, admire Rakti, obviously. The boy from Berra Willock, sign off. He was teased with it with She's Archie. Took my cob there to win. I'm there in the Herbert Power last time out. It was an eye catching run. He's my tip to beat. Um, from Faulkner. Um, admire Rakti and Lucia Valen. Oh, for protectionist as well. Goodness oh, me. I think protectionist will beat. A oh. protectionist on top uh, as well. I think he's the clear winner. Sign off. I think he's got a sense of timing. I believe that there's been six of us on and we've all tipped the same horse. Uh, if I could change. Admire Rakti and Faulkner. But here is the market for the Emirates Melbourne Cup on Tuesday. Admire Rakti. Of course, Sea Moon as well. First run in 1861, and for the jockeys and the... Let's have a look at the market. Do we have a market mover here for the Emirates Melbourne Cup? Well, they're back to few by Ladari, willing foe, Gatewood, well back in the field as opinion and who shot the barman, Lucia Valentina on the rail, followed by Mutual Regard, Aureldo, protectionist, Unchain My Heart, precedence towards the end with Mr O'Kieran and Size Moss was still last, coming around the turn now and Brambles is the first one to race up and challenge my ambivalent as they swing around the bend. They're being followed by Red Cadeau, poised for his run and so is Size.
sign off and Au Revoir's wider followed by Gatewood at Myrect is well back Opinion has pulled out Mutual Regard is threading through and so too Protectionist Red Canoe hits the front sign off coming after him with 300 metres to go Willing Foe starting to run on down the outside and Protectionist is bursting through Protectionist raced to Red Canoe who shot the barman and then sign off but Protectionist raced away at the 100 metre mark it's Germany's Melbourne Cup Protectionist by three lengths to Red Canoe and Protectionist bolted in the cup by three. Red Cato second again. Who shot the Marvin third and then sign off. Willing foe, Priestel and Teraldo, followed by Au Revoir, Seismos, Faulkner, Lucia Valentina and Nick. Brambles, Unchained My Heart, Janub, Ladari, and uh, then my ambivalent who went... All about the German and Ryan Moore. It was the Cox Plate on an Irish colt and now it's the Melbourne Cup on a German stallion. Take a bow. Yeah. Uh, and you see Ryan Moore now. He wants to come out here. But no, they shut the gate there, pushes him back inside, um, is it the, uh, the foe, William, the foe, whatever it is. Foe, yeah. yeah and, then when, and that's when he got the gap and now explosion. Was this is, the, he ran the last furlong here, 11.6. Now, the sprinters on the day weren't going that quick. No, this is the end of right. two miles. Obviously, Red Cadeau was fantastic. Bossy gave uh, Hoosh at the Barman and McKay a diva yeah, like right. Peach of a ride. But look at the, the ever widening margin here. As good a Melbourne Cup win as you've seen since one of yeah. Makaba Davis, I'd say. Absolutely brilliant, wasn't it? Just incredible to see him power away. I reckon. But what a star he is. What a great ride by Ryan Moore. Just put him to sleep on the fence. He found the fence. It, he just did everything right. And how strong was he? Um, be interesting. Everything. The, the world is at this horse's feet. This is perhaps the most dominant win in a Melbourne Cup I've ever seen. Uh, this, the margin was huge. I think it was the biggest margin on a dry track since the 90s. Uh, Do you think the depth was there? Let's have another look at uh, him here. And what about Red Cado, just as we have a look at this uh, replay? He's run second in three, three Melbourne Cups. Amazing. Incredible. I wonder if you'll... ...here at Flemington on a very warm day. Mick Goody and his team put a lot of irrigation on. But Brent Zarafa joins me. I think it's claimed its first vi first of the features, and many believe the highlight of the entire Cup Carnival being the Dali Classic. If you like Chautauqua, two dollars sixty is available for two double figures. The rest. What a race this is. This is the uh, 2014 Daly Classic. Wait for a change. Back behind them, Temple of Boom as they settle fully into stride down towards the inside and they're fairly tightly bunched. Temple of Boom is followed by Cluster over on the outside and then Terra Vista sidesteps a good way back in the field. Slade Power's got up to be about fourth or fifth. Uh, now let's see as they run down towards the 500 metre mark. Shatak was buried away over on the inside trying to find a way through. Buffering the leader. 500 left to go from Lankan Rupee platelet right up there. Slade Power behind them on the rail for moment of change. Shatak was starting to work into the race now. And then Drefontaine Cluster and Rebel Danes right down the outside. Lankan Rupee moved to the lead now at the 200 metres. Buffering won't let him have it on his own. Here's Terra Vista weaving through and Shatak where they're coming. Lankan Rupee in front. Terra Vista about to claim him and now Shatak where Terra Vista's hit the lead though. Terra Vista in front and Terra Vista won it by a head. Shatak where Lankan Rupee's run third. Moment of change. Buffering followed by famous Seamus Rebel Dane. Back behind them, sidestep Drefontaine, Slade Pe Terra Vista wins. Uh, he's a star sprinter and he's come over the top and win. And Chautauqua lost no admirers there. He was held up. He was in a. It's another group one. Chautauqua, a brilliant ride from Dwayne Dunn to get off the inside. But Terra Vista's come from behind him and beaten him. So you cannot uh, put, knock the win of Terra Vista, an outstanding win. Shatak with just no match. Gee, he tried hard. He knuckled down late again. He came again, and they've just got the better of Lankan Rupee, and they've got away from the rest of them. Three stars, three stars of the turf shark. Oh. You moment, Terra Vic, for you coming from back in the field. Yeah, he's a serious horse, this, and he, uh, you're going to hear a lot more of him. He'll be the he'll be one, he'll be the best sprinter in the country come the autumn. And Joe has said that. Love him. But Lankan Rupee for a fleeting moment looked like he'd land another major. But these two just too good coming back from off the speed. Look, Shatak went. Well, fair income contest going to the uh, the best sprinter. No arguments after the event. Terra Vista. Terra Vista, big performance there. Hugh Bowman and Joe Pride claiming a group one. 108.79 was the time Terra Vista has won nine out of 13. So he's he's got. He was two for two down the straight before yesterday. He was gallant in defeat. Yeah, look, he's wait for age, third up there. He's he's a raw he's a raw talent like the winner, and, and I don't think there's much between them really. He no. he. Terra Vista got you. He was very very good, but two. I'd suggest 
It's two and or maybe three exciting sprinting types there, obviously. I'm trying to work out whether Lankan Rupee's not as good as he was or is exactly the same as he was, and these two have just emerged and are now better. Um, I, I got a feeling it might be... totally dismiss him on looks. Nothing wrong with him. Very it, strong and well. Here's the five-year-old mare, Hannah's goal. She was uh, pretty disappointing in the uh, the jubilee winners and several placings has uh, skipped away at Davis's tip earlier in the day. The... It's on Secret Sham. Last year's winner, Glorious Day, taking closer order. Grand Prix boss forced deeper. Then Fierro from Hatter's goal. World Aces hugging the fence and pinching plenty of ground on the turn. Further back to Trade Storm now. Marira looking to angle somewhere here on Able Friend. He's all strung up into the straight. He's got Hatter's goal and he's outside. Gold Fund might be gone here. Secret Sham and Glorious Day's race to the front. No, Gold Fund's got something in reserve. Now Able Friend with the last shot at them and Big Red is starting to lengthen. All 1,300 pounds of him and away he goes. Able friend from last has put play to them quickly. Gold Fund resiliently battling on for second, but Able friend bolts up for Joe Marrera. I think Gold Fund lasted for second. Grand Prix boss diving at him. Then World Ace Fierro. Trade Storm next from Hannah's goal. Fine tingling performance by Able friend. He's made it look so, so easy. Joe Marrera starting the celebrations at the 50 metre mark. He's won it by four to 50 metre mark. He's won it by four to five lengths. Here at Caulfield, as we get ready for the Schweppes Rubiton Station, Chautauqua, the dollar ID favourite uh, here. Rawson it's all went under, but Chautauqua, one of the uh, best sprinters we've got in the country. We've got some good ones. They sweep to the turn, then is Amathon. So 400 left to go, and it's a line of three, a laping one away from the rail. Flamber's wide, Oakley Girl on the fence, ahead of atmospherical Missy Long stocking the thief. Chautauqua's in a bit of bother here. He's got to the outside, but he's got about four lengths to make up. Flamber's in a laping go to the lead from Missy Long stocking. Chautauqua's coming, and then atmospherical. It's Flamber's the leader. Now Chautauqua starts to fly. Flamber's being tackled by Chautauqua. He's finishing the best and he's got there. Chautauqua ahead to Flamber's. Three lengths, atmospherical just in front of Missy Longstocking. Then Richie's... Well, he was always going to get there, wasn't he? Well, yes, that's the most important thing. You don't want it over again, but the bit of class uh, pulls out late here. Got the ninety on the toes. So dollar... Look, if their opposition's not scared of Chautauqua going into the new market, they should be, uh, because that was a sizzling performance. Um, after giving him a start and getting home that fast, uh, that was an awesome performance, I thought, and uh, obviously the horse to beat in the, in the main race. Agreed. Mm. And... Sheeting the new march at Torquay. Have a look at this uh, this market for the new market. Uh, look wow. at this for a, for a hot liner. It, it is uh, deep field. Uh, team Hall. Well, there's your market and deep field. The Hubble deep field is the favourite here. Two dollars. Virtually public prep to go off here today. Ch champion sprinter, reigning horse of the year. Looks. He might just about to be to deliver it. Jumped out on the 13th over 800 metres. Ran. They're followed by Waterman's Bay and the quarterback now. Fab Favolta's making a beeline towards the outside rail. He'll be solo out there. He has the lead. Deepfield now is left taking the field up. Lankan Rupees a length and a half behind him. Brazen Bow just in behind them, followed by Waterman's Bay and the quarterback. So Fab Favolta heads to the 300. He has the overall lead in the race. Deepfield doing the chasing work up the middle of the course. A length behind him, Lankan Rupees and Brazen Bow staying on. They come to the 200 and Fab Favolta's getting tired. Brazen Bow trying to get up on the inside. Lankan Rupee went straight past deep field. Lankan Rupee claims the lead in the final 100 metres and it's the master of sprinting. Lankan Rupee by two and a half lengths. Brazen Bow second, deep field ran third, then Waterman's Bay, Fab Favola and the back. Absolutely brilliant. Great to see him demoralise opposition. This is what he did last autumn. When he took the word, anyway, the race was run properly and truly, and uh, best horse on the day one, and it was uh, great to watch. I know you say it's a nice problem to have, but you've worked hard thinking this will absolutely demoralised opposition here. Lankan Rupee only had 21 starts, he seems to be around forever, doesn't he? 11 of those wins, and the sprinting crown goes back his way. Blazing sectionals here, not surprised. Lankan Rupee, and uh, look, we know how good a sprinter he is. I think he's won four or five group ones in the past 12 months. He loves Flemington. It's going to be a cracking new market. And I think what you said's right. Now, Joe, Joe Pride understands how to promote racing. I wish I was on radio yesterday in Sydney here and said, people said, oh, who'll win the match race? I said, well, the old horse will win it because he simply is more seasoned and better at coping at that level of pressure. The young horse, a very good horse, 
will go on and do good things, but he's got a lot to learn. And we saw it because of the pressure from the older horses. So, you know, I think it was a, a classic case of it. Well, I'm not as old as you, Richard. But today, Group 2 three-year-old race, the Hobartville, with an elite field of three-year-olds, a collection of the best three-year-olds in Australia. And uh, what a race it is. Four Group 1 winners are returning for their camp. It's in preferment. About 550 to go. And Cassidy puts the foot down on the leader, Merso. Hallowed Crown's tracking up strongly on the fence. He's about to push out into the clear. Panzer Division shoved him back into the fence, though. And then shooting to win is out now. Delectation is further back. It's Merso in front. Shooting to win is starting to let rip up the centre. Shin goes for him now. Hallowed Crown on the inside. Panzer Division. And Swayness is starting to run on. Shooting to win hit the front. Hallowed Crown on the inside. Swayness and Kermit X out wide. There's plenty of chances here. Swayness is coming strongly on the outside. Hallowed Crown gets up on the fence, though. Hallowed Crown has got there and wins it for me. The Swayness shooting to win and Kermit Ek in a thrilling finish. Then sworn to silence, followed by Scissor. Trace, when you get affected like that on the turn and you still pick yourself up and win, look out. Three Hallowed Crown, Hugh Bowman. He's got the record in a three-year-old colt in the country. He'd be very enviable, enviable uh, right now. And what a thrill it is to train it for my grandfather and Lloyd Waddock. To return there, it was a super race. Hallowed Crown has now won five out of six. He looks set for a great autumn. And uh, Classic here at Corvair. It's Blue Diamond Day for William Hill and Alpine Eagle. The much spruiked to Adelaide horse for Tony McAvoy. $2.20. Two lengths in front then to Lucky Patty under pressure from Moon over Manhattan. Alpine Eagle now Oliver's working over time. He's got five lengths to make up as he comes around the home turn where it's Firehouse Rock who's absolutely bolting and he's taken over the running from Magic Cool. Uh, there followed Lucky Patty. Alpine Rock is battling to get near them. Moon over Manhattan is doing a pretty good job but Firehouse Rock's well clear. Minazink has got up on the inside, ran to second. Alpine Eagle starting to warm up now. Firehouse Rock in front. Alpine Eagles not over yet. Here he comes. Flies. Oh, I'm not sure. He's dived at Minazinga, who's got up on the fence and is doing a pretty good job. But Firehouse Rock's well clear. Minazinga's got up on the inside. Ran to second. Alpine Eagles starting to warm up now. Firehouse Rock in front. Alpine Eagles not over yet. Here he comes. Flies. Oh, I'm not sure. He's dived at Minazinga, who's got up on the fence. And Firehouse Rock, who looked home and hosed, has walked to run third. Uh, they're followed further back. Pepper Jack is last, and he's got there. Can you believe it? Unbelievable. Unbelievable performance here by Ali 5 into 190. Probably 300 to 1 at the 300-metre uh, mark here. I'm not sure the others came back. Minnesinger got the better of the turn. You are a bit flat. Yeah, he took a bit of riding, Sam. He's, he's still pretty raw, this horse, but he's got unlimited potential. Um, it, uh, it was a short-priced uh, favourite. I'm not saying Caulfield's his track, uh, but he was just too good for him. His last, his last bit was uh, was excellent. Uh, the uh, he's, look, he's got a lot of raw ability. You can see he still doesn't know what he's doing, and he's uh, he's performing so well. So I think there's a bit of a, uh, a decision to make in the next uh, day. Big night at Maui tonight. Uh, earthquake favour for the William Hill Oakley Plate, the second of the Group Ones, and one of the beaut uh, sprint races because it's a handicap. And it is a totally different. Now. Those horses is Nostradamus and then Sharm will win. General Jackson, iconic towards the tail. Bell Sprinter's back there with Fast and Rocking. Coming around the turn, I'm all the talk, led by two links to Earthquake. Two links to Whittington on the inside and then Lord of the Sky, a time for Julia. Vane Queen trying to find a way through and then Sistine Demon and Sharm will win. I'm all the talk at the 200, led by two links to Earthquake. Atmospherical is getting a run on the inside, followed then Vane Queen and here's Sharm will win. I'm all the talk, the leader, coming home atmospherical and Sharmal Wind and fast and rocking flies, Sharmal Wind hits the front, Sharmal Wind got up to win from uh, either under the Louvre who flashed home on the rail or fast and rocking and... Big win here for the Love family and they love their racing, you'll see some red and white suits coming out shortly and Sharmal Wind is just setting the scene for Dwayne down all for... And ...fallen short, but once he'd won that stakes race for them he said we want to have a crack at the Group 1 it's an exciting race. It, uh, Shamal Wind, that's her go. A fast run race, down in the weight. She's only a little mare and she ambushes late. I thought the ride was cool, calm and collected. And... There they go.
off and racing. Salerno in the centre beat them out and shows out from Mogador just after the moon. Then Wolf Christ, Sebring Sun starting to creep around the outside and he's looking to get away from the rail on Exosphere. He's now coming out on the back of Sebring Sun and Sun flashes at the rear of the field. Mogador leads for home from Salerno. Then Sebring Sun and Exosphere is going to be the widest runner coming down the outside and he's starting to finish fast. I put pay to them in one stride. Exosphere, a great turn of foot and he raced away about four lengths in front of Odyssey Moon, Wolf Christ, Sebring Sun and Mogador and Exosphere canes them by about three and a half Odyssey Moon. Mogador, I'd say, got third just in front of Wolf Cry. Then Sebring Sun followed by... Well, maybe, just maybe, he might be the top pick for the Godolphin stable heading towards it to his new golden slipper because, as Mark Sheen rightly said, he destroyed them. He was 2.50 to 2.40. This week, this horse has got a sense of timing about him. He's... he's uh a big layback, raw colt with plenty of talent. Um, Wolf Cry look very talented horses coming into this race and their reputations were intact. But look at this. This is a, a total domination. This is this. This remote this is a, a, a proper slipper horse. So you need a strong horse for a slipper. He's strong. Uh, Hard. In the betting ring, like Flinders <laughs> Lane or Pitt Street, number that two. That was worth it. <laughs> number two first seal's been 170 into 155. It did lose a bit of its oomph when you took three quarters an hour to answer the question. Little cold. Slightly sweet, and then came abduction. First seal in the second half of the field, and then came Wine Tails, Peggy Jean, and Winks at the back of the field. 600 out, Lucky Racky the leader. Three quarters high above, Separa Candelara. Then came Amicus, followed by a drift, and then came abduction. First seal is about three and four wides. He's out in the bed ground and starting to roll forward followed by slightly sweet wine tails was further back from peggy jean and winks coming into the straight lucky racky just in front from high above here comes first seal she's letting rip down the center and the odds on favorite shot to the front now she raced about three clear of supara then slightly sweet she's something special first seal she'll win at hands and heels only and first seal beats supara third slightly sweet just in front of amaki just in front from high above here comes first seal she's letting rip down the centre and the odds on favourite shot to the front now. She raced about three clear of Supara then slightly sweet. She's something special first seal. She'll win at hands and heels only and first seal beats Supara. Third slightly sweet just in front of Amicus and then came Winks and Wine Tails followed by Adrift and Candelara then Peggy Jean followed by Abduction high above and Lucky Racky has finished at the back of the field. Wow, ah, she didn't let anyone down. She was heavily backed. She could be one of the big stars of the upcoming autumn carnival. Number two. Important for you, though, the feeling when she let down? It's pretty amazing. I, I, I'm very lucky. I've ridden some good horses. But, yeah, she, she's up there with the best of them, I think. This is the one out yesterday. And, Mark, I, I knew she'd be well backed. But I never in my wildest dreams when the price went up thought she'd start twos on. No, well, they were taking the $1.70 into 155 at one stage, but they were spot on, weren't they? That was a better turn of foot from her uh, yesterday, wasn't it, Brent? Uh, she was just able to power past her opposition. And it was quite arrogant the way that Blake Shin just sat last. He was happy to give them a start. You don't see too many fillies take off four and five wide and just circle their rolls and go straight past Isn't them. it great to see her? John Thompson, that was a devastating win. Well, there's a wow factor about this. Mm. I know I'll probably be shouted down, but it sort of reminds me of like a Sunline type performance. Uh, she, wow. She, yeah, <laughs> I, I, this filly, she'll get into the Coolmore with 54 and a half. Mm. How can they beat her? How it's, can they beat it's her? It's got to be tough. I wonder if they'll run, if she wins. Stakes. We saw a terrific winner in the fillies division in the Riesling with English who is going to win the boys' division, and that is the Todman Stakes. And we saw a terrific winner in the fillies' division in the Riesling with English, who is going to win the boys' division, and that is the Todman Stakes and the reigning... ...off the lead. It's Furnaces on the inside. They're going at a steady gallop. He leads by about a long neck on Vancouver. And then Headwater on the outside, third, followed by Mashani Honcho, and Voiliers in the centre. So we'll see what this favourite's made of. He's had to sit wide, and Furnace is being revved up as they turn for home. Lead from Vancouver, Headwater, a length and a half away, being called on, and then came Voilier. Well, at the moment, you wouldn't want to be on the favourite. Vancouver's hit the front from Furnaces. Headwaters three lengths away. Vancouver doing a little bit better than Furnaces at the moment. Headwaters not in the hunt. Vancouver half in front. He's pulling away. He's got the cash. Vancouver remains undefeated and comes away and beats Furnaces. And the golden slipper favourite, Headwater, has finished third. Then Mashani Honcho. And wow. Wow. We've got a new slipper favourite here, ladies and gentlemen. Number three, Vancouver. He'll be the slipper favourite.
He, um, only two weeks ago, was made to look second rate here. And I don't know, it was more uh, upbeat after the race. Tommy Berry, who said the Triple Crown's gone, uh, or Gay, who just said the, the Golden Slipper winner's there. Yeah, look, uh, Vancouver. Uh, he maintained his unbeaten record. He shot to the top of the Golden Slipper market, 1883, the fastest 1200 by a two year old at Randwick. And our special. And, um, and he's one that I think can uh, overreach. She's the sharpest two year old I've ridden. She, she went into the slipper, and I, I never thought I could get beat. Um, you know, it didn't want, matter what barrier I drew on, she had the speed to win it. And, uh, but this bloke feels like if he can win the slipper, I think he, he'll win the next two by even further. Guineas, Group 1 for the three-year-olds over the miles. Six starters, small field, but it certainly is elite. Three of them are already Group 1 winners. Swayness looks a treat as he's trying to win. He's and Swayness is last of the six. He'd be about five or six off the lead. It's shooting to win under a tight rein coming for home. Hallowed Crown is in second spot. Swayness is pinching a lot of ground. He got a dream run right along the rail here. He's come up into third spot. So as they turn and it's shooting to win in front. Swayness coming up on the inside. Hallowed Crown and they've dropped Swan to silence. Shooting to win. He's still sitting pretty at the moment. Hallowed Crown on the outside. Swayness the inside. The Three of them knuckle down to fight it out. Hello Crown is responding. Hello Crown hit the front. He draws away. He's a winner. Hello Crown goes on to win it. Beats Wayne Essen shooting to win. Who looked to be jogging at the 200 but was found wanting late. And then sworn to silence. Road and drive. Number one, Hallowed Crown. He makes it his sixth win from only seven starts. He won the Hobart Ville. He now wins the Gervin War. Group one, Ram Guineas. He was too good for them. He saw them. He just loves it. You know, he's, he's always going to find late. And the, the horse knows nothing better than just to attack the line. And he did that. He, he savaged it. He won again. This is the best three-year-old in the country. He is at the moment. He's proving to the fact that um, he's, he's been overlooked, even though he's now six out of seven. But, uh, look, he's got the best record of any three-year-old colt <coughs> in the country. And uh, long may it continue. Yep. What's next? And it's taken us a while to real, a lot of us a, a long time to realise that seven starts, six wins. But that was a special race. I reckon that was a special race. All those three favourites looked the winner at some stage in the straight, to my eye. Any excuses from beaten rivals today? It's been a terrific betting contest all the way through, and there's a big four here. Not, not forgetting the three-year-old Brazen Bow, who lines up here as well for Joe Marrera. Here's the latest market. They're coming to the yard for the uh, the new market. Lank and Rupee, three dollars favourite. They went up to 80 here on course. But the... this race has been enormous for a long, long time, probably since the spring, really, when these three big guns met last time. Sky a clear leader, two lengths in front of Drefontaine, Brazen Bow and Terra Vista down on the inside. Lankan Rupee has them all at his sights on the outer. Followed Chautauqua were in some traffic from Aeronautical and then came towards the end. Adaptation and Waterman's Bay to the 400 metre mark and Lord of the Sky, the leader. Brazen Bow darts up on the inside from Drefontaine. Wider than Terra Vista and Lankan Rupee had a bit of a brush together as Terra Vista tries to get into the clear. But Marira shot the three year old Brazen Bow two in front of the 200 metre. They might battle to get to him here. Terra Vista, Lincoln, Rupee, Shatak were starting to flash home. But Brazen Bow, the miracle man, Marira. Brazen Bow by three legs to Chautauqua. Terra Vista's run third. And uh, Lord of the Sky held on. Closely followed Aeronautical. Delectation, Lincoln, Rupee didn't finish off. Drefontaine second last. And last to finish is Waterman's Bay. Well, we won the contest. In the end, we got a complete thrashing. The three-year-old Brazen Bow upstage is the best sprinters in the world. He makes them look second rate. That man, Marrera, does it again in this huge batch of owners for on-track racing. Yeah, and he's too good, mate. Brazen Bow. This is a serious horse, isn't he, Joe? He's just outstanding type of a horse, man. Gentle. He really knows what race is about. Put a good... Sydney for a race like the TJ Smith or one or two others, but... Uh... Royal Ascot for him, Ron? Oh, look, I think definitely. Whether they uh, run in the TJ Smith, they probably will. Um, but I, I... It's on the, in a certain way. There's some reason why horses run for him. Perhaps they don't run as quickly for other jockeys. Now, uh, that all sounds a bit airy-fairy, but I've seen it before. There's, there's certain jockeys horses run for. Mm. I've never seen it to this level. This bloke, there's something freaky about him. Oh, there's no doubt. He wasn't probably going well enough, uh, Lankan Rupee, to sprint up at the time anyway, but this is a marvellous performance by uh, horse, jockey, and don't forget the trainer, because this horse was just set up for this race beautifully. Yeah. Look, he's a, and he's a freak down the straight too, this horse. Um, I'd have to say that he, he, there's no doubt they're going to take him to, uh, to Royal, Royal Ascot, because it's going to set him up as a stallion prospect in his own right, and...
the same again I've had. This is number six, Winks. It'll be interesting to see what Dean thinks later, but I, I, I'm not saying she's the best in the yard, but what I'm saying is she looks a lot better filly than what we saw first up. Is Winks, two ninety into $2.45. Tab.com, the by Haraki on the inside. Test of Shadows outside of it. Winks is at the back of the field with Poudre Moo. As they round the home turn now, 500 to go. High above in front, Hampton Court's come off the bit, trying to chase it. Diamond Valor is trying to push off the rail. And then Supara, followed by Haraki, has got room near the inside. Winks is coming down the extreme outside with Test of Shadow. Diamond Valor is out after the leader. High above just in front from Diamond Valores. Araki getting up on the inside. Winks is starting to join him with Supara. It's Winks out wide, starting to sprint up now. She's hit the front 100 out, Winks. And she's put them to the sword. And Winks races away and beats Haraki. And it's close for third between Diamond Valores and Supara. Then came Testa Shadow. Ah, that's the real Winks. She destroyed him today. She needed those two runs back from her preparation. Tommy rode her so confidently. He set out the back. She's run 130.26 and come away with a decisive margin. Look, she's always been a very good filly, uh, Winks. If you go back to the spring, she ran second to first seal a couple of times, including in the Group 1 flight stakes. So they might start thinking about a Group 1 with her now, Winks. Well, she's got a confidence now. She, she certainly out-sprinted them yesterday and uh, off a relatively slow speed as well, I might say. So she'd been running at the top level and just found out a little bit at, at a couple of runs back. But... With the confidence back yesterday, touch easier. Now she might be the time to um, pretty well attack again. Um, hey, back against three-year-old Phillies company, Winks. It's going to be hard to beat for anything. Even first seal's going to find a tough to toss, I think. No, she, first seal's got the wood on Yeah, her. I don't know if she's got the wood on as much. That filly seemed to improve a lot. Mm. Maybe the grade came down a little bit, but... Betting. First seal? Oh, first seal for Ronnie. Oh, you're so confident about those things, and yet you can be so wrong yeah. from time you to wish. time. It was 460 into 420 after the draw is held. He spot there at the 420. Don't usually get a slipper market where only two runners under double figures here. Headwater was an $11 chance this morning. He colours. Here's your market. $2.90 on fixed odds for Vancouver from the outside. And Remar's been taken back to the tail of the field. Haybar leads inside the 550 metres from Haptic the outside. Speak fondly in third. Furnaces tucked away just behind them. Headwater under pressure and Vancouver is inching closer now as they turn the corner. And it's Haybar just the leader from Haptic in second. Headwater trying hard from Speak fondly. Now Vancouver, English and right down the outside is ready for victory. It's Vancouver and English racing to the front. Headwater fights on. Furnaces has got the run on the inside. Ready for victory. Wide out. It's Vancouver with his head in front from English. And Vancouver, the favourite, roars away for Tommy Berry. Vancouver wins the slipper from English. And Lake Geneva flushing home into third. Then Furnaces from Headwater. Further back to Serenade, Odyssey Moon, Ottoman. No. <laughs> like he's, he's, as I said, I said he'll win the slipper and he'll go on. He'll win the size and champagne by further. And I've got one right. I hope I'm right about the other two. He's just a mammoth. The house is going to somehow Hoover. Uh, out of barrier 15, the same barrier that Starwatch, trained by TJ and ridden by Larry Olsen. You mentioned uh, of the beaten brigade, ones that did have excuses. We touched on it yesterday uh, during the coverage. Exosphere pulled up with uh, cardiac arrhythmia and uh, certainly uh, will be going to the paddock. Rose Hill Gardens, the George Ryder Stakes is the next. Another Group 1 here and a fantastic international field here. Five out to six. The Japanese horse, World A, steady at seven. And Criterion's been ten into nine today. Class, 600 metres out and real impact in front. Both three quarters to Cosmic Endeavour. It's somewhat being scrubbed up the outside. Hook travels well behind them. Then Burbro, Criterion's hugging the fence as they straighten up. Shooting to wins back midfield, looking for a run. Royal descent as they straighten up and real impact at the three. Metres, a length and a half clear from hooked criterion back to the inside. Burbro tight for room further back to shooting to win. Who's seeing daylight now? Real impact is still the leader from criterion. Shooting to win can't get there. Criterion the inside of real impact. Real impact and criterion. Criterion driving here at real impact. Oh, it's a close one. Real impact refused to sit down. Real impact and criterion split it in a close finish in the George Ryder. Shooting to win behind them from Royal Descent, then hooked. From the and it will be a Japanese victory on the outside if that is to be cried. A Japanese victory on the outside if that is to be criterion. It'll be real impact over criterion. They were both so brave. It can be a bit iffy, but 
he began and got on a lovely rhythm. And I set him a light 600. Much improved race there. Kermadec did his Doncaster mile chances, no harm at all with the lightweight. Um, that's a serious form line going into the Doncaster mile. No, always. Tyrion's problem is he he's aiming for the sky you know like he's got to go the queen uh, queen elizabeth now and he, he hasn't won in a long time and he's ready to win a group one but whether he can win the top of the tree group one is a different situation altogether we'll look at some races we'll start with the wait for age bmw there at rose hill the favorite was the japanese horse to the world at two dollars sixty Hartnell from Extra Zero. Well back, who shot the bar, and Protectionist as the field starts to compact a bit, coming to the turn. Fast Dragon in front from Hampton Court, but here they come, Hartnell and to the world, rushing around the outside. We've beaten up train to go with them. At the top of the straight, it's to the world on the outside of Hartnell. Beaten up back in third, to the world looms on the outside of Hartnell, and the two stars have drawn clear. Hartnell, the inside of to the world. Hartnell's kicking from to the world the world. Hartnell gets a half length on to the world. Beaten up back in third but Hartnell will take out the BMW. Hartnell too good for the Japanese horse to the world. Beaten up third followed by who Isn't shot the bar and a protectionist lead from... BMW the going to Hartnell there. What a great battle it was between two great horses. Hartnell, he's only had the three runs in Australia. Two wins and second in a group one so he's off to a great start. And of course we've got uh, James and John with us. He's obviously thrown in the Sydney Cup and, and and he, he looks beautifully placed in that. But this performance was that of a Melbourne Cup favourite. Um, 3,200 metres in England before, <laughs> hasn't he? He won very impressively at 3,200. Yeah. So, um, at, at in the TJ Smith Stakes, the Group 1 event here, more million-dollar racing coming up here. Of course, a black caviar winning, of course, a black caviar winning this two out of the last four runnings of the race. And last year's winner was Lankan Rupee, who backs up again and... Is in the market here at three dollars. Terra Vista's covering ground from famous Seamus. Then came Fontalina from Fast and Rocking, and Chitaka was back last as they start to spread it up now around the turn and the mudlark rain affair. Full of running at the moment. Two in front of Lord of the Sky. Lankan Rupee being popped the question in third. Further back to Terra Vista making good headway. Rain affairs under siege now from Lord of the Sky. Lord of the Sky races to the lead. Terra Vista's giving chase. Chitaka was coming with a big run on the outside. It's Lord of the Sky length clear. Chautauqua is eating up the ground. Lord of the Sky a half in front. Chautauqua starting to level up. Here we go. Boom. Chautauqua lunged at Lord of the Sky and he might have got up to win it from Terra Vista third. Then Fontalina from Rain Affair. Lord of the Sky a length clear. Chautauqua is eating up the ground. Lord of the Sky a half in front. Chautauqua starting to level up. Here we go. Boom. Chautauqua lunged at Lord of the Sky and he might have got up to win it from Terra Vista Vista third, then Fontalina from Rain. And oh gee whiz. He's won. He's won. Wayne Hall. Oh, he's a super horse. I know it's how often he said coming up the rise, he couldn't believe how strongly Lord of the Sky was going. He said he really relishes in the going, and he said it just took a freak of a performance to beat him. Well, here he is claiming him he slow out to the end of stride here, back last, and considering the pattern of the day, <laughs> that was a, a, a big, big performance. First and second, that was a great race. It was a fantastic 70 and a dollar 60. Lord of the Sky at four dollars 80, and Terra Vista third, a dollar. What a fantastic field we've had gathered here. On the soft seven track, the 150th running of the Doncaster Mile, Royal Descent at $7.90 and $8 for Halloween. Diamond Drillers last as they race around the home corner now, and real impact off the course goes up to join Hooked, followed then by Ninth Legion. Rudy's got plenty of room, Sacred Falls back to the fence, Portaché's making ground, and coming down the outside now is Royal Descent with a great run. Real impact hits the lead, Royal Descent mows him down the outside, Kermadex bursting through on the far side, Kermadex hits the lead from Real Impact. Royal Descent's dying on his run and it's Kermadec. Kermadec scores a great win from Real Impact. Royal Descent third, then Rudy followed close up by Pornache, Suavito, World Ace, then Lee Baz from Sacred Falls, Happy Trails, Hooked, Cosmic Endeavour, Diamond. Well, he was second emergency for the race and they had to wait until 7.30. It was 7.29 and 59 seconds before they knew that Kermadec was going to be in the field. Who was going to be... Being a colt, he's got a bright future ahead. You fifth, Doncaster, and Glenn Boss celebrates his sixth. So...
real history make shortly. 10 10 and $3.80 for Kermadec. A real impact, $4.90 the place, and Royal Descent, $2.90. Anticipation is rising here. We've got the Queen Elizabeth Stakes, $4 million over 2,000 metres coming up next. We've got a first four pool game. Here's the market criterion, a $4 equal favourite with the Japanese runner to the world, also at $4. Adelaide, if he wins this, he's almost guaranteed of being a horse of the year, $5.50. Red Cadeau to the world, covering a bit of ground. Uh, further back then to Royal Descent, over on the fence. Adelaide still back last with Lucia Valentino and Spillways just behind them. It's five and a half star, racing past the 600 metres. At two and a half clear, but criterion starting to bridge the gap very, very quickly, followed by Omen, Tosin, Stardom's off the course. So's Happy Trails. Uh, further back then to a Red Cadeau and to the world is strung up in traffic as they straighten up and Criterion's taken to the front by a length on Tosin Stardom who keeps coming the outside. Aomen the rails. Lucia Valentino down the outside but it's the uh, Derby winner. Criterion well clear inside the 200 metres. Criterion's burst away in the Queen Elizabeth Stakes. It's all over. Red Cadeau goes into second. Clear from Royal Descent going to third but Criterion, what an emphatic victory in the $4 million feature. Criterion beats Red Cadeau and Royal Descent, then Spillway from Lucia Valentina. Adelaide got going late from Tosin Start and Mayoma up short and run last. What a win. What a win. He has absolutely spanked them. And he was going to win a long way from home. He's put a margin on Red Cadeau, second again, Gina. What the, a but, horse, But Ed though. Dunlop and Robin <laughs> Trevor Jones are beside themselves with excitement. Exactly, a $4 million race. I'm not surprised because he... Is... Elite Group 1 horse, and uh, he's going back to Hong Kong if he pulls up well next week and then hopefully to Ascot because he's done everything a horse could do in Australia. So you want to go to Royal Ascot I would love to. This year? At, 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 one of my dreams is to take an Australian older horse and do the reverse to what they've done to us. <laughs> which is uh... Feature. Criterion beats Red Cadeau and Royal Descent. Then Spillway. He won a Black Opal as a two-year-old. He won a Rose Hill Guineas and ATC Derby as a three-year-old and placed in plenty of good races. But uh, Ron, yesterday he really went to a new level winning that $4 million race and in really dominant fashion too. Wow, he, he had that race race one uh, from the 800. You could just see horses getting off the bit around him and he was just trucking into the race. Hadn't won for 12 months. Um. Classic over the 1200. And uh, 420 fix for Miracles of Life in at 390 on the tote at the moment. Vane Queen at $5. Sabatini is the other one. Magnificio and back on the fence. I love it. Then Miracles of Life. Avoid Lightning was next. Then Runway Star. Natural Disaster. Wawail. Miss Steel. Uh, fine approach. Vane Queen still well back with politeness. Texan Hurley last. Greg has moved up now. Greg has moved up on the outside of Tycoon Tara. I love it coming at the pair. Little Miracles of Life deeper out. It's on the inside, Tycoon Tara. Going with it on the outside, Greg is Miracles of Life late. In front, Greg is near the line. Miracles of Life dive, got up. The post size man got up to score. What a cracking result. Miracles of Life has won from Gregor's. Third, not sure. I love it. A few Bowman gave her a lovely run in the race, Ray, and she's going to be able to just get there. That was great, especially for her to come back here and, and do what she did. You know, it's, uh, it's fantastic. She had a love of her own age and sex. This is against all comers, all aged mares here and fillies. It's open, they're off and racing. Now Winks jumped out okay and she's going to go back in the second half of the field. She's back third last when they hit the ground, the favourite. And when they settle fully into strides, Drive and Merrion. What a lovely day on the fence from Rising Luck. And they're followed then by Buck and the Blues. The next is Allman Game of Fame, El Jedham Abduction. A long way back then as they come to the home turn, Elusive Cat Swift Lady. Winks is last. She'll have to come past the 17 of them. Into the straight and sky limit past the 400, kicked away. Worthy call. Now went into second spot, about to give chase. Followed by Right and Drive. Ullman is next, and Right or Wrong is pulled to the outside to the 200 metres mark. And Worthy Cause got the sky limit. Ullman getting up on the fence. It's Ullman and Worthy Cause there together with 100 to go. Look at Winks. Look at Winks. She's come from last. She stormed down the outside. Oh, what a win. Winks got up and beat Ullman and Worthy Cause in an amazing performance. Right or Wrong away. Worthy Cause now went into second spot, about to give chase. Followed by Right and Drive. Ullman is next and right or wrong is pulled to the outside to the 200 metres mark and Worthy Cause got the sky limit. Ullman getting up on the fence. It's Ullman and Worthy Cause there together with 100 to go. Look at Winks. 
Look at Winks. He's come from last. She stormed down the outside. Oh, what a win. Winks got up and beat Allman and Worthy cause and an amazing performance. Right or wrong, just behind them. So too, Road and Drive. Swift Lady cause got the sky limit. Allman getting up on the fence. It's Allman and Worthy cause. They're together with 100 to go. Look at Winks. Look at Winks. He's come from last. She stormed down the outside. Oh, what a win. Winks got up and beat Allman and Worthy cause and an amazing performance. Right or wrong, just is last of all. Oh, that's unbelievable. I was bailing out about halfway oh, yeah. round because Don't she was... Don't worry, so was Ronnie at Scone and he was wanting to sell his ticket. Little, little faith. <laughs> and I just, just thought, well, you can't win from there. I mean, surely you can't come round 17 runners and win from there because it, they hadn't gone that hard in the race that you'd think, oh, this is suicidal up front here. There's something will have to come from last. Have a look at her here on the outside in the blue colours. She's got a head turned to the side. She wanted to hang in a little bit there, so she wasn't going completely straight. She flattens out a bit here now, and this is just, from here on in, breathtaking. Look at this. She ends up winning by about two lengths and pricks her ears on the line. You're right, because the horses in the finish there were horses on the speed. Yes. And she was the only backmarker. Yes. She couldn't get a card into the race from any of those backmarkers. <laughs> um, I'm worried about it. One feature at Doombin, the Doombin 10,000, and that is race book order with the market about 20 minutes or so away from action. Shrek Candy at 6.50 on the fix is out at 7.30 as far as the tote market is concerned. Not far behind it, scissor kick. And, uh... and then Neo, bring me the maiden, getting back on the field as Charlie Boy, followed by Boban and Noidata's last. 700 metres left to go and time for big money. Then Rock Sturdy, followed by Neo, Charlie Boy, Boban, bring me the maiden, Noidata. They're coming around the bend and time for war, the leader. Here's Fricandi. She's coming up on the outside after time for war and past the 300 metres mark. Time for war about to be joined by Fricandi. Flamingo star, Rock Sturdy. Here's Charlie Boy and General. Lee Fay and Boban is bursting through in the middle. He's a great go. Boban, General Lee Fay and Charlie Boy, they come to the line and Boban will win the 10,000 from either General Lee Fay or Charlie Boy from Noidart. Then Sacred Stars for Candy, Rock Sturdy, Flamingo Star. Boban has won another Group 1. Glenn Schofield and Chris Waller, first up with his horse today, wins a Group 1 10,000. He's a big... Boban, he's now won over $2 million in prize money and he's won four Group 1 races. Yesterday, also an Epsom and Amra Queensland Oaks approaching. Let's get to Doombin. Group 1 action here at Doombin. This is the Treasury Casino and Hotels Queensland Oaks to be run for the first time ever away from Eagle Farm. Our mounting yard brought to you by... A little bit of depth there and all day, for a couple of days now, I've been trying to think of a way to tip against this favourite. She's taken about three steps in the yard and I'm telling you, I won't be getting away from her. All right, well, we'll get to her in a moment. Let's start with... Uh, in fact, we're going to start with Winks. She's the first one we look at. Well, it was just such an exciting performance, treating arrivals with contempt there at the, on the Sunshine Coast Guineas. Heavens above our deep on the track, and then Rustic Melody, Ungrateful Allen, followed by No Tricks, Exquisite Jewel. Winks is on her way forward now. They're followed by Zazali. Further back, Swift Lady, Anna Fora, and Yulong Baby is last. They come to the home turn. Colin Lil, the leader, Imperial. Lass is issuing the challenge on the outside as they come around the bend. They're three in front of Ballet Suite. Sabrina, Rustic Melody, Heavens Above and Winks has pulled to the outside. 300 metres to go. Imperial Ass has gone to the lead from Colin Lill. Here's Winks. She's winding up and have a look at her go. Inside the 200 metres mark and Winks has raced to the lead from Imperial Lass Ungrateful Allen. And this is a monstrous win on the Oaks. Winks ease down. Three links Ungrateful Allen. Imperial Lass third free. Rustic Melody, Heavens Above and Winks has pulled to the outside. 300 metres to go. Imperial Ass has gone to the lead from Colin Lill. Here's Winks. She's winding up and have a look at her go. Inside the 200 metres mark and Winks has raced to the lead from Imperial Ass Ungrateful Allen. And this is a monstrous win on the Oaks. Winks ease down. Three links Ungrateful Allen. Imperial Ass third from Zazali. Rustic Melody, no tricks. Uh, followed by Belle Swe and that is a win and a half. What an exciting victory by Winks, the odds-on favourite in the Oaks. Comfortable with where I was and how she was travelling. 
How good is she? What do you think would be a nice target for her in the spring? Is she a Meyer Classic or is she a Caulfield Cup? Or is she? Oh, I think she's more of a miler. Um, you know, she was strong. She was strong yesterday over 2,000. I think 2,000 is within a grasp at the top level, but I, I don't think she's a mile and a half horse. I think she's too brilliant. Yeah. And you know, I think personally, I th I, I'm not. I understand she's going to be aimed at the Meyer Classic in the springtime. But I think you'll see the best of her next autumn. Just before Brent jumps in there, the, uh, the other one, Raposo, had won. Anyway, we've got the derby coming up. And Werther is your 225 favourite on you bet fixed odds. He does look like the one to beat. Let's go to Glenn Munsey. 700 metres left to go in the derby. Saddler's Lake, three parts, chilling with Dylan. They're followed by Rising Luck. Up him on the fence from Worthy Cause and all's in. Thermogenic High Midnight. Further back is Magic Cool Spur on goal. Now where's Werther? He's back about ninth or tenth, turning for home. Burn trying to get him into clear space. Saddler's Lake led on the straight. 300 to go from chilling with Dylan. Up him on the fence from Thermogenic. Magic Cool and Rising Luck are coming down the outside from Jumbo Prince, but Saddler's Lake. Led inside the 200. Magic Cool is now starting to rattle. Werther's getting up along the fence. A jumbo Prince Lake. Magic Cool, Saddler's Lake. Werther's getting up on the fence, but Magic Cool's grabbed the lead. Magic Cool won the derby from Werther, Jumbo Prince, and Saddler's Lake. Justin Bigo from Chillin' with Dylan up him on the fence from Thermogenic. Magic Cool and Rising Luck are coming down the outside from Jumbo Prince, but Saddler's Lake led inside the 200. Magic Cool is now starting to rattle. Werther is getting up along the fence. A jumbo Prince Lake. Magic Cool Saddler's Lake. Worth is getting up on the fence, but Magic Cool's grabbed the lead. Magic Cool won the derby from Werther, Jumbo Prince, and Saddler's Lake. Just in behind them, grab a brandy, thermogenic, quick strike, chilling with Dylan. They're Magic Cool. Oh, Magic Cool coming off the back of that win over 2,000 metres at Flemington where he defeated Kenja Wood at his last start. That was a pretty good effort there in his... Uh, in the yeah, air. bit of hay fever. Yes, Mark Kavanagh, whose stable has been under a cobalt investigation by Racing Victoria stewards, but all of that was put aside yesterday as Magic Cool took the Group 1. He was coming off a last up and raced well, and, and although he was caught wide, I thought it was a nice ride, just kept blending into the race by James Winks there. He, he got him nice and balanced. Fresh here, 